goes, I'd out fight you, I'd out fuck you, and I'd out dance you. Oh, you ain't out dancing, you both. No one's out dancing me. I've seen you dance. Good luck with that. His fucking Ron Cray's wife. While Ron's in prison. While Ron's in, in Broadmoor. And he's also fucking her in the Mercedes that Reg bought my dad. He got banged up for a whole chain of burglaries. Do you know why? Because he left his fag butts at every scene of the crime DNA. And I've climbed over a bank, pulled my T-shirt up. Mate, fucking punch of wounds T-bagged. all over me. Oh, done me like a kipper. And he was coming up my body. The last one was in my head, but it didn't make a, a, a big dent. Your dad first raped me when I was 13. Your dad first raped me when I was 13. So I'm like, whew. You fucking said something, cunt. What did you fucking say? Fucking say it again. Say it again, cunt. Go on, fucking say it. Information covered up, censorship, corruption. The mainstream media have proven itself to be untrustworthy. I'm here to give a platform for debate, for truth, for open discussion. I'm introducing you to my podcast, Silenced, with Tommy Robinson. Who exactly is Tommy Robinson? Or Stephen Nexley Lane? With the English Defence League, the EDL. Robinson has a long logic. The problem is with Islamic The radio. English far right Islamophobic activist. Since then, there's been organised protests across the country in London, Manchester, Leeds. People in their thousands are marching for Robinson. There is no such thing in this country as a Muslim. Free Tommy Robinson. Liam Tufts, or Tufsy, is a social media influencer and boasts a sizeable fan following. His videos tackle current trends like immigration, the COVID con, and what it means to be English. In addition, Liam Tufts is also a businessman. Sometimes he works as a motivator alongside a business in security. Recently, the social media influencer opened up about his troubled upbringing, his notorious gangster father, and how he used to abuse him. He is unapologetic with his opinions and known for telling it as it is. It's my pleasure to welcome him to my podcast, Silenced. Welcome to my latest edition of my podcast, Silence, where I'm joined today with a very good friend of mine, Liam Tufts. Thanks Liam. for having me, man. I've got, to, I've got to do a disclaimer at the yeah, start. Yes, you have. Disclaimer, this is the second time we've done this, okay? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. So, about seven months ago, there was the, a film was released that I had an injunction that wasn't allowed to go out, which meant I was facing two years in prison. I went to Spain, wasn't in the best of places, sort of ended up going on the piss a little bit. And when Liam came over to do the podcast, I'd been on the piss. So on the actual podcast, I was sat in my pants, <laughs> sat on my pants. I had loads of penny sweets and sugar sweets, and I was, every time in between him talking, I was stuffing my face. And I think it was probably disrespectful at the same time, but... I'd been on a bit of a mad one at the time, you know. Liam came over and babysit me, basically, yeah. moved in with me, and, um, and then got me back on the gym, got me back in my place, and uh, six months later, here I am. Come on. Yeah, and <laughs> I didn't find it disrespectful. I thought, shit, that man needs me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we've we, we, we done a real nice, I'd, yeah. lengthy podcast, didn't we? It was... I don't remember it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do, and, I, and I've now got to do this one and think of completely different topics to talk about. No, you don't, because I don't remember it. So don't, no, oh, I'm, only joking. I've got I'm, say, I'm only joking. I've, I've got to say it again like I've never it said it before. A, it, we could have put it out. You might not even have known, but I knew. I knew. Mm. I'd gone over there. I'd landed in... I was landed near Benidorm. I'm thinking, I've got nowhere to live. Where am I going to be? I'm out here on my own. Went out the first week in Benidorm, got jumped, ended up punching my way through the strip for a few days, and then... Uh, and I'm thinking, God, man, I'm in, a, I'm in a bad place here. Yeah, if you ain't punching your way through the strip, you ain't done the strip. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, so, Liam, thank you for joining me again, yeah? And, uh... Nib bother. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> we first met... I remember seeing you blow up on social media. I remember seeing these videos of this man marching around his kitchen. Boom, boom, and, and it was always going on a rant. A, a hilarious rant, a comical rant, very sarky rant about politics or modern or, or what was happening at the time and then I remember seeing you and I think I did I reach out to you I must have messaged you at the time because I was blowing up at the same time on social media 
that's when we started talking. So it must have been, must have been about eight years ago. And what no one knows, that the reason why I used to rant and shout and tell jokes and crack funnies into my phone was I was confined to my house because I'd lost my driver's license. I mean, of course, I was walking here and there and everywhere, but a lot of the time, if you can't get somewhere by vehicle, you think, I can't be fucked. <laughs> so I got lost in the, uh, in the social media world, and then I've always had a nice sense of humour. I like to think so, and I appreciate humour as well. I don't take offence. What I've learned is I certainly give offence unintentionally. Too bad. And uh, so, yeah, I saw people like cracking jokes on social media and I thought, I'll have some of that. So I started just doing some funny sketches and things that would pop into my head. And, uh, and at the same time I was doing my social media thing, I'd see you pop up on Rebel Media. I thought, cool, he's got some fucking stones, this geezer. Look at what he's doing. But mate, just fantastic viewing. Uh, so yeah, you're popping on social media, doing your thing, which I thought was tremendous, might I add. Very, I thought it was real, real nice. I was doing my thing, I was cracking funnies. And then there was a bit of a crossover because you started talking about topics that I'm particularly passionate about as well. Because obviously we're gonna talk about what my dad done to me as a kid. So I know what it's like to feel exploited and exposed as a child by older, more influential figures. And you was exposing gangs of people that are doing that to young children. So I thought, well, I, we sort of speak the same language here, so we probably saw each other at the same time and touch base on whatever platform it was. We'll never be able to find it because since we've both been cancelled several <laughs> times. But that's how, we, that's, yeah, that's how we met. And uh, here we are now, eight years later, on our second take of your podcast, Silenced. And this time, last time he was in his pants. He was in his underpants doing, doing the interview. I mean, I mean, every time you see me on an interview, when I'm online doing any, I'm always in my pants. Mm. <laughs> I usually just got a shirt on in my pants. It's comfortable. I <laughs> Not today, I've got jeans on, right? Only because I just got in, otherwise I'd have been in my pants. Well, now that we're sat so close together. <laughs> and we're close, yeah. I'm glad you're not yeah. in your pants. Can we start, Liam, before, because most people, I, we'll get onto it. You're, you're a successful businessman, you're an entrepreneur, mm. you've done a lot. But before we, I just want to get back to your early life. Mm -hmm. Where did you grow up? Grew up in Crawley. So Crawley, which is a London overspill. West Sussex, not too far from Gatwick. And there's different parts of Crawley. You've got Did some... I stay at Crawley? I, I think I stayed in Crawley when I flew from Gatwick, no? Is that right? Is it that close? Y yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten minutes, yeah, ten yeah, minutes, yeah, drive, ten minutes, yeah, ten minutes yeah. drive from Gatwick. Yeah, so it's handy if you want to fly Gatwick, uh, sorry, yeah, Gatwick, Crawley, East Grinstead. Uh, I've lived between the two. I've lived all around Crawley. Anyone from Crawley will know there's loads of different areas and <clears throat> I've said this before but I'll say it again Broadfield was my earliest earliest years which if you if Crawley was a human body Broadfield is the anus it's one of them and then you've got Bubish and I, I lived in both of them so that was my very very youngest years how, how old and this is council state oh yeah oh yeah I'm, I'm yeah I'm, I'm council through and through so I'll never forget my roots and I'll also, obviously I've come a long way since those days. Mm. Since, you know, council estate, people will be able to walk through the front door, through the back door, fucking help themselves to whatever they want. Sort of council, council life, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Not too sure how that works now. But I think because I've always had that, I was born up rough and ready and around colourful individuals that even though now I do, I do quite well. I'm still, I'm still aspiring to be a much better version of me and achieve greatness. I still want to do that, even though I'm 43, like I haven't lost my drive, but I will speak, you know, and I know it's a cliche, but I will speak to the janitor the same way I will do the CEO. In fact, if anything, I'll give the janitor more, more courtesy and respect because I know how fucking tough it is when you're at, the, you're at the bottom of a ladder and you can't even reach the first step. So yeah, very grounded, very humble because of my background and, and where I'm from. Floated all around Crawley. Uh, only child? Only child until I was 10. Had a brother from my stepdad. Okay. Very lovely lad. James, his name is. I hope you don't mind me mentioning you, James, but I do love you, brother. Uh, real lovely lad. Nothing like me. I know that I'm a wild card. I know that. I know I'm 100 miles an hour. I know that I've got 101 things I want to say and think all at the same time. and. How they come out, who knows? Probably why I've been cancelled so many times. Ah, 
if you'd have thought about that before you said it, you probably would have done it differently. However, yeah, very different, but also very close, very tight. I'd, uh, I'd, you know, I'd stand in front of a, a bullet for him if needs be. But from naught to 10, I was an only child. My dad was in prison from a very, very young age. So I'd go and visit him in prison regularly. Do you remember that as a young age? I do remember that. I do remember that. And it's something <laughs> that I've never been asked before. And I remember hopping from prison to prison to prison, predominantly Parkhurst. With your mum? Go my visit with my your mum, mum would take me, my okay. nan would take me, uh, which is probably a good segue into just quickly mentioning, before we go any further, that my mum and my dad are a million miles apart. My dad was 21, my mum was 19 when I was conceived, and she soon cottoned on that he was a piece of shit and had to go, but he was very overbearing, very dominant figure, very charming, like a lot of narcissists are. You know, he, he charmed his way into, into my mum. As soon as my mum realised the stamp of him, she retracted and rebuilt her life. And as much, as, a pe um, as much of a piece of shit that my dad is, and make no mistake, and you'll be hearing about him soon, my mum never ever, she wanted to, but she didn't deny him access. And I can only love and respect my mum for that. What age, did they, what, age, what age was you when your mum and dad separated? About two. Okay, but so I, from when you was... Yeah, young, yeah, okay. but I still, I still have a memory of that young. Very, very brief, but my dad was, this was in Broadfields, I can remember the house. My dad's towering over my mum, and it was an intimidating, it's an intimidating image that I have in my mind. That's my first ever memory, really, as a child. Not that that's poor me, I'm all traumatised now, but it's, uh, Terry Stone asked me the same question, and it just came into my head, yeah, I remember. Well, so he was being abusive to you, Mum? Oh yeah. Oh, he's he's abusive to everybody he comes into into human contact with. It can be a cat, a dog, man, woman, boy, child. He's he's an abuser of of the highest level. So I remember visiting visiting him in prisons. Again. Is that is that, is that a, a, a thing that sticks in your head? How often would you visit him in prisons? Reg um, regularly. Regular so as a childhood. That's regular as clockwork. And I would always say in the car journey, I get car sick. I've got to sit in the front. And they'd all be like, yeah, of course you do. It's like, no, trust me, I get car sick. You still say that now, Liam. Yes, I do. <laughs> I can't remember. Me either. We had to pull over, I had to get in front. I threw, up, driving. I threw up all over the back seat. It's like, I told you. But like, I weren't trying to pull a fast one. Mm. So yeah, I'd go and visit my dad regular in prisons. Parkhurst was the, was the memory on repeat. There would be areas where kids could congregate and play and interact with each other. I was very aggressive and I was very quick to resort to violence, even from a very young age. Monkey see, monkey do. My dad would speak violence, act violence, uh, fantasize, romance violence. It was all violence, violence, violence. So from a very young age, I had my mum's really nice, calming, soothing influence. Thank God for that woman and my nan. Big loves of my life which is why I'm very respectful towards women. But I also had that overbearing, overpowering, domineering, violence, toxicity, dangerous, unpleasant side that would permeate me, permeate my ears, my head. You know, I was being indoctrinated from one side and I was being soothed and healed from another. But because they were separated, they couldn't see the severity of my dad's influence on me. But they knew he was a bad man, so I'd be in in these waiting rooms, fighting kids. I'd just be full of anger, man. I was, I was a very angry, a very angry young boy, and I'd come out there, but my dad, my dad would encourage it. My dad would hype me up during the, during the visit around the table. He'd still be talking violence. Every time he was always fitted up. And he was in prison with Reg Cray. What was he in prison for? The, the very first time. Yeah. The when first, well, yeah. In and out of uh, young offender centers, juvenile nicks. But the first proper sentence he got was conspiracy to rob a post office yep. <coughs> with, a, with, with a shooter. How uh, old was you at this time? Oh, how about what I've been? Young. Yeah. Young, young, young. Yeah, I don't remember, I don't remember the arrest or how it went down. I mean, I, I certainly know the story since because I've heard it so many times, which, and it's comical. 
But, I, but I, I, remember, I remember the visits. So him and two of his mates, and I've recently been corrected, and I do not want to... I don't want to get my facts wrong. Yeah. A, you look like a fucking wanker, and I don't want to discredit anything else I have to say. So I got my facts slightly wrong on a previous podcast, and I apologise to people watching this. I said that my, my dad did do this job that went terribly wrong with a guy called Spider. He was a drug addict. Great big fucking hands like a shovel. People will see this and they'll, they'll concur. Yeah, he's just got some fucking hands. <laughs> But I thought... Why do they call him Spider? I don't know. Yeah, good. Yeah, I do not know why they call him Spider. And he's a drug... Is your dad a drug addict? Drug addict? My dad was a drug addict. That's sort of down the line. OK, cool. So... So, yeah, this job with Spider. Spider is alive, by the way. I thought Spider had died of an overdose because I'd heard that so many times. The spider's probably watched the podcast and seen you say he's died of an overdose. <laughs> Bit with his big hands. Geezer. <laughs> I... I I've had people... <laughs> He's like, I'm alive! Yeah. Hello! <laughs> Mate, I, I've had... Since, since, I, since, since my first podcast and I, and I described Spider, and, I, you know, and, and it was only a flippant comment, he's now dead of an overdose. <laughs> My inbox. No, he's not. I was with him the other day. Really? What's he look like? How big are his hands? It's like, oh shit, it's Spider. So I apologise. Spider... Oh, did he message you? No, but people that know him did. Okay. And at first I questioned him. Okay. But, Spider is alive, but okay. it doesn't change the fact that he got... He was my dad's co D when they attempted to rob this post office and it was shut, geezer. They turned up to rob the fucking post office, criminal masterminds, and it's ironic because my old man... Like, Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> you, may, you may as well be dead. Whose job, whose job <laughs> was the research on the job? Yeah. Who planned it all? <laughs> well... God, no, we're not in. Sorry, Spider, we're not taking... We're, we're, not, we're not here to take a piss we're out of you. We're not taking a piss. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. Don't look at the hands. Uh, yeah, so it... They would turned have been, up would have and been it was closed. Man. Turned up. Closed because it was closed for the day. Closed because they got there early. Got there late. Ready to go. I don't think my old man's got a punctual bone in his body. I think it was just shut. Shut. Couldn't get through the door. Uh, <laughs> armed. Ready to go. Getaway driver. Anyway. They conspired to do it. They got the firearms, therefore they got the sentence. They didn't get a penny from the post office because they didn't even fucking enter the building. So when my old man likes to tell people how much of a gangster he is, he's a hand pumper. He's got the brains of a rocking horse, but thinks everywhere, he thinks everybody else is stupid. It's like, mate, you lost the right to call anybody stupid or question anybody else's mindset the day you attempted to rob a post office that wasn't open. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that was his, that was his first How long conviction. Did he, get for that? he got six years. He got six. Now, so for you, give yeah. or take. Go on. Go on. No, I was going to say, as a, as a child, it's hard losing your dad. I, I'd say it's hard, hard not seeing your dad. You, you're saying now your dad was a scumbag, a piece of shit. We'll get on to all that. But as a child, was I'll, it difficult? I, I, I will have your dad taken from me and go to jail. Whatever question you ask me, I will be brutally honest, no matter how vulnerable it makes me look, and it will blow some people's fucking minds when they find out some of the things he's done. He was my hero. I fucking love the man. He was a powerhouse of a character. He was, in my eyes, a leader of man. He was a man amongst men. I would see him have giants under manners. He had that thing about him. Put it this way, when him and Reg Cray become best friends. It's well documented. The Sun report, this was in Parker, so this is that first stint in jail. In the six years? This is that stint, yeah. Okay. So the, uh, robbing, robbing the robbing the post office that wasn't actually robbable, mm. this is the stint he got sent to Parkhurst. He then bunks up with Reg Cray. They become so close that the Sun report that they're gay lovers. Uh, Reggie Cray was gay, yeah? In the, I think Reg Cray was gay from day one. Uh, I'm not even convinced that, that, he, that he consummated the, the marriage with Francis. I think it was just a big, just a big front. She was his beard. Yeah. R Ron was openly gay. Yeah. Uh, and I think Reg was too. But you do find, don't you, that a lot of lifers, they do turn to the, uh, to the dark side because they're never going to rump anybody else. They're never going to get a cuddle from nobody else. But I think Reg had it in him. And I think Reg... Well, so what, the, the Sun newspaper run a story saying your dad was gay. <laughs> yeah, the, the, run, the, the Sun run the story that my dad and Reg were gay lovers. Uh, well, um, this is when they were in jail together or when they're out? 
when you put that down? Ah, I think it, when they was in jail together, because okay. my dad had a couple of home leaves, and by this stage, him and Reg were so tight that my dad got picked up for, uh, on a ferry, because it's the Isle of Wight, Parkhurst. Parkhurst now... Now it's a nonce. It's a, it's a nonce jail. Back in, the, back in the day, it was a gangster's jail. Yeah. And it's funny, because my old man is, would come to it, my dad is now back on that island, in Albany. As a nonce. As a nonce, yeah. So he, he was in Parkhurst as a gangster, so he thought he was. In with Reg Cray, rubbing shoulders with people like Jules Holland and Roger Daltrey, UB40, Reg Cray setting him up with all his contacts. My dad was Reggie's power of attorney. My dad got the royalties from the book. Uh, the Who Presents, you know, Don Quadrophenia uh, and Tommy, they were going to do the film The Craze with, with the Kemp brothers initially. My old man obviously upset them like he does everybody else because he's a, he's a megalomaniac. They was like, can't work with this fucking idiot. My old man is on the phone to Roger Daltrey telling him to have some respect. It's like, whoa, that's the lead singer of The Who. You're a hand pumper that can't even get the fucking opening times right of a post office you're going to rob with a gun. You want me to have respect for you? Oh, OK, let's just forget all the platinum albums we've done and all the, and all the sell-out concerts, shall we? Forget Quadrophenia, we've got Pete Gillette on the phone. <laughs> fucking gangster number That's one. That's his name, Pete Gillette. Pete Gillette. And uh, so it, all the doors got closed on him, and then I think it was Polly Graham that done the film for the craze. So, yeah, so my old man and Reg, they, they were that... I'm what I'm no, trying to say tight. is they were that tight... People thought they were gay. ...that people thought that, 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 that they were gay. Well, the Sun newspaper reported that they were gay. Uh, Reg would call my dad the pup. And that's just about... He's his bitch. Sums him up, yeah. He's his bitch. When you think of it like that... Running round for him. Yeah. My old man would like to think he's his right-hand man, he's his, he's his henchman. It's like, no, no, no. You're not his henchman. When he's come out... Well, your dad's come out of jail from that sentence. Mm-hmm. Has, has Craig come out at all from that? Or was he kept in the whole time? Oh, Reg stayed in jail. Reg stayed in jail. Until he died. So your dad comes out of jail and he is his, his, his bitch. Probably running around doing things he wants him to do. It was a funny old relationship. Mm. When I say my old man... He's a megalomaniac and a, a, with a narcissistic personality disorder. As much as I don't want to give him any credit at all, because he has done terrible things, which we'll get into with me, not to mention kicking women downstairs, giving them brain damage, putting knives up to fucking pregnant women's stomach, wishing children are born spastic, in his words, not mine, laughing when my mum miscarried with my what could have been my brother or sister. My old man is actually lucky he's still fucking breathing because I should have really executed that cunt years ago, but I don't want to be the one in jail. So I've dealt with him in, 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 a, in another way, lawfully, rightfully, and honourably. But... There's a mad crossover coming up. Yeah, yeah we'll, there's... We'll get a... onto it as well. Yeah. Yeah, so when my dad came out of jail, Reg stayed in there till the day he died. Your my... dad gets back involved in your life at that point? Yeah, like, he, comes, he, 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 he comes back out. He's my hero again. He's, he got a little part in the film. And I guess if he's, he's also a gangster. Oh shit, this is what I haven't said. Yeah, go on. This is, when I said I don't like to give him any credit, and he's a megalomaniac and a, and a narcissist. I've heard the way my dad speaks to Reg. I've heard the way my dad speaks to Reg Cray on the phone, and I used to go and visit Reg most weeks. Reg loved me. Reg loved me like a, like a grandchild. Uncle Reg. He'd ring up most days when we lived in East Grinstead. Liam, fruit and veg is on the phone. How you doing? Talks very quietly. Yeah. You're doing well at school, you're doing your homework. Everything all right? Yeah, yeah, good boy. God bless. You should love that. Anyone that knows Reg that's got a letter from him, God bless, love, affection, Reg. That's his sign off. God bless. Anyway, perceived as a gangster, my old man, although he was Reggie's. Call, let's call him Reggie's pincushion, because he'll watch this. He's a fan of yours. Deep down, he's a fan of me, because I'm everything he'd like to fucking be. He does? Yes. Yeah, he's a, he's a fan of us both. You I know he's a fan of, me I know he's a fan of, because everything I fucking do, he's so riddled with jealousy, he tries to sabotage it. But, going back to what I'm saying about the megalomaniac, and thinking he's, he thinks the world is one big stage, and he's the centre of it, and everyone else is an extra. I've heard how he speaks to Reg. How does he speak to Reg? Shut your mouth, cunt. <laughs> mate, <laughs> oh, shit. Ma mate. <laughs> Simon? Yeah. I'm glad that I've always got somebody... Is he speaks to him like that because he's in jail? He speaks to him like that because he doesn't give a fuck. He thinks he's the biggest man on the planet, little wanker. Which is why he's now back in jail, because he's never helped another human being in his life. My dad, as we're on the subject of this Mongol, yeah. 
Remember Kate Cray? She, yep. she done a, was it Britain's Deadliest Men or Britain's Hard Men? Was that Danny Dyer? No? Yeah, Danny Dyer done Britain's Deadliest Men. Yep. I think Kate Cray sort of was the pioneer of that. I think it was Hard Men. Some, okay. Something like that. Was that right, Si? But it was along, along those lines. If you Google it, Kate There's a book, Cray, Britain's Hardest Men, no? Yeah. Did she do that? I don't it's, quite, got Jonathan, it's got a lad from Luton on the front cover. Possibly. But Kate Cray, she done either a, a series or something to do with, like, Britain's Hardest Men. OK. She obviously wanted the, uh, she wanted the, she wanted the smoke. She married Ron Cray. I've got no reason to believe that Ron Cray didn't love her. I'm sure he loved anybody that you come into contact with, including the lads in Broadmoor. But Kate Cray is now Ron Cray's wife. Indisputable. Because my dad is Reggie's power of attorney, my dad's now mingling with all these people, a lot of these celebs that Reg was wrapped round. My dad starts fucking Kate Cray. <laughs> Your dad's, until we get on, he's just going up and up. Yeah, it's just like, whoa! <laughs> just going... Come on, Pete, why stop there? <laughs> so he's fucking Ron Cray's wife. While Ron's in prison. While Ron's in Broadmoor. And he's also fucking her in the Mercedes that Reg bought my dad. So my dad's fucking Ron Cray in the vehicle that Reg Cray bought him. Liberties from all angles. And this is between sentences, actually. So this, is, this fits in with, with, with the timeline. My dad then moved to Burgess Hill. When Ron... And I've heard my dad talk to Ron Cray on the phone. You've seen, the, you've seen the film The Craze when Cornell uh, tells him, fat puffs don't threaten anyone. I've heard my dad say it word for word on the phone to Ron Cray. Who do you think you're threatening, you fat cunt? Puffs don't threaten no one. <laughs> Mate, I've heard it. So when Ron finds, yeah, when Ron finds out that my dad's been having sex with his wife, he then puts a contract out on my dad. Now, do you mind? <laughs> so I said a story about Reg here. Ron, me old man. So, there's a contract now put out on my dad's head from Ron Cray. How old are you at this point? I would have been, let's just say between eight, nine, ten, okay. around then. I, w I was young. I used to watch the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon when that was popular. So Google that if you want to know the... Rob and Rocksteady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Splinter. Shre April. Splinter. Shredder. Yeah, yeah Shredder. Yeah. <laughs> We could start singing that. And all I good. love it, man. So uh, there was a contract out of my old man's yeah. head. What he failed to do as a responsible adult and father was, A, let me and my mum know. It's probably not a good time for Liam to come and spend time with me. So we sat in darkness on the floor, not on the sofa, in case there was a drive-by, in case, there, in case the, the, the whole house got plastered in bullets. Eventually, my old man, not diplomatically, not even polite, Reg, sort your fucking poof brother out. He's, put, he's got a fucking contract out on my head. Who's he think he's dealing with? The slag? It's how he used to talk. So Reg being Reg, which is why I believe that Reg was in love with my dad. Which then makes me think, because you're probably going to ask the question down the line like most people do, do you think Reg fucked your dad? I think Reg certainly would have liked to have fucked my dad. Well, I was going to get into the court video, but we'll get there in a while. Yeah, that's a nice we'll touch. Get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. I want to insert it in this point. Yeah, we're going, to, we're, we're, going to, we're going to put it in there. Cool. So, uh, eventually, the, the contract got called off. There was no what? longer a price. His brother saw it out. Reg told Ron... Leave it out. Leave it out. He's my boy. Okay. He's my pup. Remember that. Not, not Reggie's. Henchman. Pup. Bitch. Lapdog pincushion, potentially. Who knows? So, that was that. And then, now, I'm back and forth to Burgess Hill by this stage, which is on, on the way to Brighton, south coast. And again, all I'm doing is seeing and hearing violence and toxic behaviour. And so I'm fighting all the time. As a child? I, all the time. Yeah. Got kicked out of all the primary schools that I went to, bar one, which I only had a year there before secondary school. I got lucky there. Always fighting, always angry, always ready to go. Uh, I tell you what, they were veering off, but just remember to be humble. Because no matter how many fights you have or how angry you are, being angry doesn't mean you're tough. Mm. As game as you can be, I was in a... Uh, it's all my old man taught me a good lesson here. But the only thing I can remember he'd, he'd done that was of any note, where I'd won 
all the fights I'd entered into. Because as a young age, I'd go straight to fighting like an adult. When kids are wrestling, I'm going straight for your jaw. And so I was in a, uh, in a park one day, and there's a couple of travellers. We started having a dispute. I was up for having a fight with him. He was, having a, he was up for having a fight with me. Similar age, similar size. Me and this traveller lad had a fight. He knocked 10 barrels of fucking shit out of me. Showed me this is how you fight. You may have done all right with a few no marks that haven't grown up fighting, bam. Took me to school, banging my head on the fucking, on the, uh, on the pavement. Go into town on me. My old man was, I was there with my dad. My dad watched it, let it play out. He probably could have done with intervening by the time I'm getting my head bounced off the, uh, off the concrete. How old was you Again, young man, I can't really tell. Uh, let's just, again, between eight, nine and 10, something like that. And uh, then it got stopped. Your boy, not your dad. Come on. I think we was all out of breath. Okay. They're all out of breath. My old man was like right beside us, like <laughs> witnessed the whole thing. And uh but he let you get a kick in. Oh let me get a kick in, yeah. yeah. And rightly so. Rightly so. Like being angry don't mean you're tough, and also like you get to know your limitations. Yeah. Remember, there's always someone out there that will give you a good fucking shoeing that has been fighting since they left the womb. Just because you're angry, you've got a chip on your shoulder, which I obviously did, or I thought I was tougher than I was because my dad led me to believe that, you know, we're the only violent fucking family in the world. Yeah, I got the fucking granny kicked out of me. And I'm glad it took place. From that day onwards, mate, I've never underestimated another human being again. Mm. I've always gone in like, this geezer could be Jeff Capes. I'm, I'm going in. Uh, not that I don't, I don't want to betray as a fucking tough guy, but yeah, I have had far more fights than I should have done because I was always ready. So yeah, that's a fucking other little life lesson. You go to high school? Yeah, secondary school, went there. Did you last? How did you do? Secondary what was you like at school? Was you academic? Was you nah, intelligent? No, no, no. I've, later in life, I've realised that I've got ADHD. Uh, and I wear that with pride because it's enabled me to multitask and also not do things that I'm not interested in just because I'm forced to do them and hyper-focus on the things that I want to do that I think can benefit me, friends, family, loved ones. So I acknowledge that that's what some may deem as a chink in my armour, but I think it's a superpower. Mm. I can't tell my shoelaces, I can't put a picture up on the wall, but fuck me, I can communicate and rally up a fucking team and get things what done. What do you mean you can't tell your shoelaces? You can see. Yeah, I know. I just can't don't. Do it. I mean, I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I really try, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I prefer to slip them on, slip them <laughs> yeah, off. Yeah. yeah, what I'm saying is, practically, okay, 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 I'm yeah. fucking useless. Useless, okay, cool. I am okay. useless, geezer. I, I, yeah. But how, what did you leave school with? Great. I left school with great memories, man. No grades, no, 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 no. I, I walked out of one exam. I'm surprised I made it to the exams. Left as soon as I could, I think it was 15. Again, I was fighting in school, but it's important to mention that most of my, once I had become, because I was a lot, again, I was my dad's best man when I was very young, uh, 10, 11, 12. When you say best man? I was his best man. At his I, wedding? Speech. Okay. Thank you everybody for coming with a microphone at his, at his reception, <coughs> shit, shitting okay. myself. He then takes me on his honeymoon. Uh, I, I see him give his fucking new wife a backhander in front of me. Every day, every day without fail, we're having a siesta. I'm a young kid. Every day I'm at, they're having a <coughs> siesta, they're leaving the door ajar, I'm watching my dad fuck his second wife. That's abuse. That's child abuse. I didn't realise it. He's bashing her in front of me. He's going into central Spain to score himself some puff. He's puffing in front of me. So, as a kid, this is before my dad introduced me to the real hard drugs. I guess you think that's normal as a kid. I was desensitised to everything and I was extremely grown up because my dad would treat me like a fucking adult. So I was a little adult. It breaks my mum's heart. She said, you went straight from an innocent child, childhood. straight from a child in, into, into adulthood. But when I got to an age, I was a man. But by the time I went to secondary school, I was a man. In my opinion, I had a distinct advantage over everybody, not academically, because I'm still not great academically, but street savvy, intuition, common sense, I was light years ahead of people in my year because of what I'd experienced. So I was well aware I'm going to walk away from this situation because if I react, I become a bully. I can read that you're done. 
So, although I was fighting, it was normally fighting over, over protecting somebody that needed protecting. I was, I've always, always, always been very protective. I'm sure you can even vouch for me. You know me well enough. Yes. Yeah. I, I will protect my own like <clears throat> I'm protecting me. In fact, even more so. In fact, if it weren't for some of the situations my friends have got themselves in over the years, I may have never had a fight in my adult life. <laughs> it's like, shit. But anyway, so school in a nutshell, several fights, had a whale of a time, people would jump in the comments that were in my year at school, cheeky chappy, I'd say I was likeable, didn't have an attitude at all, protected the underdog, was the class clown, that will come of no surprise. That. <laughs> that will come of no surprise, but mate, when people say school is the best time of your life, I mean, fucking take that shit seriously. I had a glorious time. Every day, I'm laughing, I'm having fun, I'm protecting people, I'm making friends, I'm having a laugh. Even the teachers that pretended they didn't like me, they fucking like me. Yeah, so <laughs> school was great. Yeah. School was great. I left with no qualifications because I didn't go there to learn. I, learned, I went there to live. And the way I lived was, I just had fun. And it's a good job that I've got, like, intrinsically, I've, I'm a happy soul. I'm a happy, positive person, which is extremely lucky because some of the things that have come my way could have quite easily fucked Broke you. Ah, oh, we'll get what, totally. Because going back as a kid, you say your dad's having sex with his missus in front of you. Mm. How old are you then? You're watching him have full, well, full sex. I tell you what, so let, let, let's just. Oh, yeah, yeah, full penetrative sex. And, and at this stage as well, when he's living in Burgess Hill, He's, so let's just say between between nine and twelve. Okay. My t this is how my dad tried to get her not guilty in court because the, the timelines. This doesn't act like. Listen, how the fuck no. is a, how the fuck is a ten year old going to remember the exact time date that, that you, you was exposing him to hardcore pornography? Well, if, what, what, what making you watch porn? No. no. This is the thing. This is this is how, and it's important that people take this on board actually because master manipulators. They're intelligent, sadly. They're predators know when to hold them, when to fold them. That's like when to go in for the kill, when to test the water, when to walk away, when to leave some breathing space before they go in again and try their luck. So my old man on his honeymoon, that's a test. I'll leave the door open. I'll have sex with my second wife. Let me see how that goes down. Made me feel very fucking awkward. I remember that, but I would wouldn't dare back then tell my dad I felt awkward. Fucking hell. I was, as much as I loved him, he was the only man that I was scared of. And I was scared of him because he would, he would behave in a fashion in a room as if I was an adult or not even there. Blow his fucking top. And he is psychotic. As much as I like to mug him off, um, people that have got a, a beef with him, they'll also do the same. But truth be known, they probably wouldn't want him as an enemy because he's not right in the head, he's cooked. He spent most of his life in jail, he's institutionalised, he's completely dysfunctional. What normal person fucks their second wife in front of their fucking 10 year old kid? So there was, there was that that he would do. Then when you say that he make me watch porn, he didn't make me watch porn, but what he would do is he'd have friends over, big drug parties, they'd all be playing Uno around the table. What's Uno? Uno's like a card game. Okay, what sort of drugs? Uh, puffing, sniff, sniff, yeah, puffing, sniffing gear, Playing Uno, I'd go to bed. I was a kid when I went it out me every other weekend. Then in the morning when I come downstairs, some people are still in the kitchen. Now I know what they was doing. All standing there with their jaw swinging from fucking Brighton to Brixton, talking about fights they've never had on the fucking nose beers. I couldn't comprehend it all. It was too much. It was an adult environment. But there'd always be pornography running on the telly. So I'd walk down the stairs, take a right into the front room, there'd be fucking half naked people in there from the party that have passed out. And in the corner of the room, there's the fucking telly with porn rolling. Because back in the day with VHS. I've never been to a, I've been on some sessions in houses, but there's no sessions where someone just leaves porn on. Mate, you should have got an invite from my old man. Different mm. gravy. Yeah, it's random. With, with a child upstairs. So back How in the- How old are you this time? Again, it's, it's, every, every time you, all, all, all this is between sort of nine and twelve. Okay. Uh, oh, but it was regular, yeah, 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 regular. Loved. And looking back, all his mates were sort of ten years younger than him. And You're impressed by him. Yeah, impressed by him. Yeah, Uncle Pete. Because at this stage, mate, he's also he's in the newspaper. 
Linked up with the craze. Linked with the craze, pictures with him and fucking, like I say, Jules Ola, yeah. Roger Daltrey, UB40. He's got a all, reputation. All, all these boat races, he's got a reputation, he's a horrible fucker. I'll tell you a story. And this fucking female, total piece of shit, who still keeps in contact with my dad, I can't mention her name or I'll get nicked. She was actually a witness for my dad's most recent trial, which we'll get to. But back in the day, this woman who was, was a witness for my dad was married to a man called D Matthews. I mentioned his fucking name from Crawley. Uh, the police haven't said I can't mention your name and if there's an issue then uh, you can come and see me. Because he's also had a few things to fucking say. My old man fucked your wife behind your back and then had you beat up in your own home and you lost your toes. And you still take his side because your wife's still in love with him, you fucking half-wit. This is the level we're talking about. These are the, this is the, the sort of individuals that I've had to deal with over the fucking years because of fucking Peter Gillette. He fucked one of his friend's wives. When his friend took umbrage to that, said, Pete, that's not cool. I'll fucking do what I want, you cunt. Who do you think you're talking to, slag? Sends two geezers round his house. Bashes the life out of him with a hammer. He had to have two toes removed. His wife then never saw my dad again. Now, this is, you know when you deal with a moron, and I've had this a few times with him, people that, people that back him now, they went about 30 years where they didn't spend a split second with him. Most of the time he's banged up. So this woman, for example, she knows my dad 30 years ago. So they think they know him. They, but they th don't know. They think they know him because they met him 30 years ago, and, and, he, got, and, and, he, and he gave her a portion, yeah. and then they didn't see each other for 30 years. Then they rekindle on social media, and then what the narrative is now from her to make herself a credible person that can vouch for Peter, I've known him 30 years. Okay. No, you fucking imbecile. You knew him 30 years ago, then you saw nothing of him for 30 years. In between that time, he went to jail for fucking burgling people's houses at Christmas, selling heroin, overdosing on heroin, getting children hooked on smack, uh, kicked women down the stairs, giving them brain damage, gave his fucking child, who is me, mind-altering class A drugs, fucked a lot of lives up, and you, and you think you know him. What drugs did he give you? And at, so, what, and at what age? So this, this is now more clear because I'm now becoming older. So. I've always said around 14, 15. My dad in court liked to, liked to say I was 16. I wasn't, and also I've got a friend of mine called- That makes a difference, does Makes it? no fucking difference at all, but this is what narcissists do. They use deflection and word, word salad to confuse the life out of, in their eyes, their opponent. I'm his opponent. No, I'm your fucking, I'm your son. What are you doing, you cunt? So, he uses every trick in the book to try and distract and deflect and he'll throw mud and he'll make up terrible lies about people as well. No, he's lying. Fucking hell, he's a nonce. Don't listen to him. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, he's a nonce. Back in the day. So all of a sudden he's discredited that person. I've seen him do it to so many people. After a while it's like, well how come you know so many nonces, Pete? <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> but everybody falls out with, and he does. So, and also I had a very good friend of mine who testified against him. Sergeant Major in the military. He's now? N now. Okay. He's led several tours in Afghan. Very, very respectable man. You've met him, Nick. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nick, we love and respect. Yeah. And Nick was, Nick's a year younger than me. So, if I was 15 at the time, Nick was definitely 14. So no matter how you look at it, you are feeding 15 and 14-year-old children mind-altering drugs. And what, also, what was mind-altering drugs? So, we start puffing. We then move to amphetamines. Speed. Speed, yeah. Speed. Anyone that's spent plenty of time doing speed will know how fucking bad news that is. If you go to people have been, that have been nutted off, excuse the phrase, I know it's going to offend somebody, a lot of them, amphetamine abuse and cannabis. A lot of people think cannabis is fine. I've had some of the worst experiences of my life at minute on puff. Some people it doesn't, doesn't affect at all, but my mind was too fragile to be able to absorb those kind of chemicals. Uh, so, speed, ecstasy, cocaine. In what context was he, were you doing drugs with him? In what context was he just handing you as kids them? Was he taking them with you? Was he taking them to parties? Was he, so how, how, how does that happen? Well, it was a, 
It was where he lived in Sunnymead in Crawley, Northgate. People will know the flats in Sunnymead from Crawley, Northgate. Is that a rough, rough area that people know? Uh, it's sort of right near the high street. Okay. I, don't, I don't know if it's, if, if it's overly rough. There's, there's rougher areas, but it's okay. still, like, they're still flats. Okay. Uh, and again, during this time, ex-veteran, my old man got him hooked on smack. I'll come to it, because I was next in line. It's mm. lucky I'm not a heroin addict. Mm. If he had it his way, I would be. I'd be a fucking career criminal smackhead. So, the context of the drug consumption between me and him, and remember, he's the dad, I'm the child. Monkey see, monkey do. My old man could have suggested I do anything. He was my hero. I would have done it. So, we start puffing. His argument was, you're gonna try it anyway, you might as well do it with me. Under my supervision. Under the guise of concern. Okay, that sounds like good fun. I know you're not allowed to do it, I know it's naughty, that appeals to me. So we start puffing together. I can't fucking believe it, can I? You know, all my mates I know that, that fucking puff, they have to sneak off to do it. They're rolling joints in the fucking wind. Losing half their fucking joint. Like, no, I've got somewhere warm and cosy that we can go and there's music and my dad's there and he's fucking Reggie Cray's right hand man and he's, a, you know, I used to build my old man up like he was the Incredible Hulk, as you would do. So, all my friends started then coming round. One of them, fucking his old man was old Bill. And my dad knew that. Such a narcissist, fuck him. You won't say a word. So it's all hush hush, it's all secret. He's the Pied Piper. Peter Pan used to call himself the boy that never grew up. Fucking about time you did come. I call myself that. No, <laughs> no my mum calls me that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't call yourself Peter Pan. Not after this, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because, you know, what the fuck is a 40-year-old man, or at the time he may have been late 30s, what the fuck have you got in common with a 14-year-old kid? Who the fuck's it? Even as, as mild as, like, a lot of people consider cannabis, it's legalised in some countries, you we know that. Smoking, as yeah. If you would sit there smoking a fucking Hurstbeer point and pass it on to a fucking kid. So... Actually... No, on camera, because we'll get onto this, but there probably are parents that do that. Oh, there are, of course there are, but... But that aren't abusing. Well, let's, let's just... Get, let's get onto it. Let's just... Yeah, let's... Let's put it real... Let's put it in some, into some severe context. Yeah. Under the guise of concern, we can have a puff together. All your friends are welcome. As long as they keep their fucking mouths shut. Every weekend, we're going to my old man's. On the bus. Anyone that knows the area, West Sussex, from Crawley to... From East Grinchley to Crawley, you should be giving your fucking son a lift. You should be picking him up, not making him get a bus, especially after these drug fueled parties that he would then uh, orchestrate. So from Puff, it went to amphetamine, and I would sit there on my own because then at, at one stage of the night, my dad also had a fucking girlfriend that was a year older than me. Thought that was acceptable. One stage, and he's actually documented this and put it on the internet. He's having sex with his girlfriend in front of his neighbor, and he brags about it. I'm fucking her for hours on the sofa and my neighbour couldn't believe how long I was rumping her for. It was like, you know, well, this is what I do. It's like, whoa, stop the clock. Is anybody fucking paying attention to how old this girl is? You're giving how old him... was she? she? She would have been 16. Okay. Your dad would have been... My, dad's, my dad will deny this until he's blue in the face because that's what he does. He's a lying slag. Janie is her name and I've since had reports that she's moved on and she's sorted her life out. Janie was 15. To my recollection, I was 14 when all the drug abuse took place. She was 15 when he started seeing her. By the time she's 16, it's indisputable, and a lot of his fucking friends at the time will confirm this, she's living in his flat in Sunnymead. He's having a full-blown sexual drug-induced relationship with a 16-year-old child, and he's a fully grown man, and he's having sex with this child in front of his fucking neighbor. Who he then got on heroin? The neighbor. His neighbour, a guy, guy called Darren, ex-military, PTSD, he was a troubled soul. My dad took him under his wing, loves you if you're vulnerable. He can really mind fuck you. Gets him in his house, they start rolling joints together, then it escalates with all of us. So this is the escalation. And this is the lucky escape I had as well. I, uh, amphetamine. I spent one Christmas day around this geezer called fucking Dell's house. He'll watch this, the fucking no good dog. From Broadfields, Dell, mechanic. You know who you are, and anyone watching this knows who he is. What the fuck were you thinking? Let me come round your house Christmas Day, sitting there, fucking taking raps of speed with my old man. Fucking pig. I fucking see you again, you're gonna have a problem. Because you don't realise this at the time. 
No, 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 because I was, I was going to ask you this. You think it's normal? I was going to ask you, at which stage do you realise you've been a vi- We'll get on to all the other stuff. At which stage do you sit and think, I was a victim of abuse, that was child abuse, that wasn't right. At what, what stage in your life do you get to that point? I'll, I'll and think about that. And you see what I did. Do you know what? I, I fucking... I promised I wasn't going to get fucking all, all aggy. But when we talk about this, come. I can imagine, because oh, you're sitting there seeing the injustice I, in, I, I in, can't in help. the fact that that man shouldn't have done that as a child. Mm. You see it. But w- w- when did you see that? So... And how did you see that? I tell you when I... When I saw the the drug abuse, because there's there's drug abuse, there's physical abuse, there's mental abuse, and there's sexual abuse. Not so much physical abuse. Let me retract that. He bashed me up a couple of times. Once at Highbury, I did do something wrong. I threw a bottle at Kenny Sanson. It hit him on the fucking calf as he was taking a throw in. It was a plastic bottle. I was shown off in front of my friends. It weren't glass, but my old man kicked the granny out of me in front of fucking I don't know if it's West Bank or whatever. Fair dues. I don't care about that. Uh, but what I do care about is the drug escalation, because after amphetamines and then ecstasy, we then moved into acid. Now, anyone that's fucking taken acid, mate, it is... Terrifying. Terrifying isn't the word. Especially as a child, probably. Yeah, mate. I mean, you take... Terrifying, but fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm yeah. See, no, I'm see, I can't... I'm joking, bro. When fucking... you say that, it's, in fact, for people watching, it's important that you realise that... The first time you do do acid, and if it goes well, you think you know something nobody else does. This is the best. And you will tell anyone that will listen, fucking you won't believe you take this little thing and all of a sudden you I go into this. Did. I'm glad you haven't. Mate, it's Never wanted. fucking it's Never wanted. disgusting. Because when, when, when you take a bad trip, and you take a turn for the worse. My mate's brother got stuck in a trip. Mate? Stuck in a trip. Took a trip, stuck in it for the rest of his life. Walk around tripping every day. Yeah, mate. Like, what's happened to him? He just took a trip. Golden trip, they call it. You never stuck you, in a trip. Psychosis, you never yeah, come so back. Gone. And mate, I was getting plied acid by my dad like it was going out of fashion. As a child. Double dropping. Have another one. Mate, I was fucking off my head, full of fear, full of trepidation. I was in it. Oh, my brain was fucking cooked. And you know what he would do when I we'd be we'd be tripping out. Now, when you're tripping out and you're feeling edgy anyway, it's the most scary place to be. Think of anyone that hasn't done acid. Think of the scariest moment in your life, the scariest place you've ever been within your own mind. Worry, panic, anxiety. You know, people are throwing around anxiety now, you know, like it's confetti. It's like there's different forms of anxiety. Drug-induced anxiety uh, is really, really bad because you know it's... That chemical is in your system, and before you can even think about getting it together, that shit's got to leave your system. So you know you're in this fucking state of... For what? You know you're in it for the long haul now. Mm. So I'll be sitting there with my friends, all on acid. The Pied Piper, Peter Gillette, will be hosting the party. Of kids. Of kids? Which, let's, let's not forget, we're 14, 15, we're children. Let's not, it ain't the fucking geezer sitting here with a shaven head and fuck it, that's not by choice, with tattoos. Like, I was a child. I was a child. I wasn't fully developed, physically or mentally. Uh, I didn't have a deep voice. I was an impressionable child. And I'm sitting with my dad in his flat in Sunnymead with my friends. I'm proud to show him off because he's my dad. And he wanted to belittle me, and from out of the blue, it's so like, what did you say? By this stage, I'm pranging out anyway. I'm scared out of my fucking wits. No, what did you say? And he'd look at my friends, and my friends would be like, I didn't hear him say anything. No, you, you, you fucking said something. You fucking said something, cunt. What did you fucking say? Fucking say it again. Say it again, cunt. Go on, fucking say it. He would come there to my face. Mate, everyone's scared. I'm petrified. I am absolutely scared Beyond my fucking wits, I've got what looks to be a maniac there. I'm tripping, I'm hallucinating, I've got rapid eye movement, I'm full of fear, and I am terrified. I am reduced to a, not even a child, a baby. I am scared shitless. And once he realises that I'm scared out of my fucking wits and he's in my fucking face screaming, cunt. Ah, gotcha! Fucking look at him, the mug. Shit himself. Ah, thinking it was funny. I didn't do anything wrong. He just done it. He turned on me. He switched on me out of the blue. 
and everyone's fucking laughing nervously. I'm sitting here thinking, yeah, mate, it's heavy duty. So that is psychological abuse. So it's around this time. That you started realising then? During the acid. Once that, once that moment took place, there was, a real, there was a moment where he'd done that and he took it too far. And he found too much joy and pleasure in that. I realised, wow, he's a bad, bad fucking man. So, I had a breakdown. I mean, oh, fucking uh, I fucking... Uh, as, as a child? 15, 16. What, what do you mean by I had a breakdown? I, I felt like I never recovered from that trip. It took me several years. I was riddled with fucking anxiety, paralysed with anxiety. Uh, my mum and my nan got me back on route. My mum and nan didn't know what I was doing when I was going there because I was keeping it, it was our little secret, like these fucking predators do. So, I was in a terrible fucking space. Te I mean, a terrible, terrible space. My nan and mum fucking saved me. And this is why, when, I, when I'm putting out my content now, it's eat real food, exercise, Sunlight, get your heart rate up, distance yourself from fucking toxic people. If you're suffering with fucking paranoia, anxiety, depression, are you taking substances? That isn't gonna help, knock that on the head. Rebuild yourself the way my nan helped me build me back. Strip regime. I fucking learned what broccoli t fucking tasted like when my nan put me on the, on the strat and narrow, and it worked. Exercise, water, hydrate yourself. She saved me, but I had to go and confess. What, and confess to your mum and nan? That I've been taking drugs with my dad and that they've taken their toll. I remember fucking one New Year's Eve, I'm sitting in, in bed at home. I, it was so terrible, mate, thinking about it, and I just wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Least of all a fucking child. My dad called me every liar under the sun. He wrote, he wrote me a letter calling me a snake. That, what, that, that what, is, he, is he in jail when you're telling your mum and nan? No, 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 no. No, okay, no I, I, I literally... Oh, you cut your contact with him? Yeah. Oh, OK. And, and he, 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 I was in Crawley one day after I basically, in his words, grassed him up. You're a grass. It's like, no, I'm not a grass. I'm a kid. I'm a 15-year-old child and I'm in fucking pain. I'm traumatised. You've fucked me up badly and I needed saving. And I turned to my mum and nan because they were the only saviours I knew because they'd been keeping me safe my whole life. And so they then said to my dad, you go near Liam again, we're going to the police. My dad said I was lying. They obviously spoke, my, my, all my friends told my mum and fucking, all my friends that have been to court recently and testified against him. Uh, so I didn't see him for a while then. Then I was out and about, fighting all the time. I was angry, mate. I was, I was angry and I didn't take no shit from nobody. Didn't take any fucking nonsense. I never looked for it, I never started it. But if I felt like I was under threat, I mean, Pope, when I was 18, 19, I was stabbed multiple times, something I don't broadcast. How many times? Eight times. Well, where, where is this? Eight, where eight, is this? eight punches in the stomach. Over what? Under the arm. Over did you, did you deserve it? Over nothing. Uh, no. no. No, no, no. I, I didn't deserve to be stabbed multiple times. He, he, I don't have anyone he, who deserves he, to be stabbed multiple he times. He tried to kill me. Was it your... the, the thing is, if you live by the sword, you've got to be prepared to die by the sword. And by this stage, yeah. I, I'm going out, I'm fighting all the time, I'm fighting doorman, uh, I was insubordinate, I didn't like being told what to do. I don't mind being asked what to do, don't fucking tell me. And certainly don't, because I've had my old man in my face. Anyone that reminded me of that, I'm fucking having it with you. I don't give a fuck how big you are, how many years you've done the door, how many there are of you. I'm coming at you. I think I would have gone either one or two ways. Was you drinking? Was you taking drugs still? You've, uh, no, no, no. no. I, was drink, I was drinking mm. and fuck me, yeah, cool. I mean, that, this is back in the day where, like, you, what, you, you 20, do, do a bottle of vodka. This stage now, free from my old man, he come back into my life, fucking down the line like he does, but that's neither here nor there at the moment. Uh, yeah, I was going out drinking like a lot of young lads. Very protective over my friends because I was so street savvy. I could read a situation. And they're not watching. Long before. Oh yeah, my, my mates would be oblivious, and I and I can see someone lining him up to come and chin him yeah. for no reason. I can spot a bully a mile off. I can spot a lunatic a mile off, and it's like right, I'm going to fucking intervene. I'm going to deal with this person. So I was always fighting. So when I got stabbed, and also, unfortunately, if I felt like I had to defend myself, I never looked at it as okay. Well, there's rules here and you've got to stop there. Like, I took it too far. I took violence too far at one stage, and it's something I'm not proud of, but also, I wouldn't change 
anything I'd done because in my mind it was justified. If you want to bully people, try your luck. I'm going to fuck you up real bad. Maybe you'll never bully somebody else again because you've just got the biggest licking of your life. Uh, as you know, I will talk my way out of anything now and ideally I never want to throw another punch in my life. I also don't want this to come across like I'm trying to be a tough guy because I've never spoke like this before. Uh, because I will defend myself and I'll go to any length necessary to protect me and my family, but I'm not out there portraying myself to be a tough guy. I know that traveller that bashed me up when I was a kid, I've been humble ever since then. I'll still give it a go, but I, don't be sneaking up on me fucking sucker punching me because it's a trophy, because like, I, don't, <laughs> I don't proclaim to be a tough guy. Uh, and if you do, you better be wearing a good pair of fucking trainers, because I'll be after you. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to be portrayed as a fucking tough guy at all, but I'm fully prepared to go the distance with somebody if I feel under threat, and I think that's because my old man threatened me, and he made me feel, he reduced me to a child, and I never want to be that scared again. So if I feel under threat, it's on. I've, I've nearly been to jail several hit times. Hit before you hit. Before? Hit before you hit. Oh, fuck me, yeah. And I or know... You're, you're constantly thinking like that. And, and, I, and I, know if someone's, I know if someone's just about yeah. to do it. I've worked the door for years. I run my own security firm. Like, intrinsically, I was built to do it. A, I'm built to protect the vulnerable. I've got a keen eye for, for detail. I can see what's going down. I can read a fucking situation, the atmosphere. I can fucking soak it up. Because as a young kid, I'm sitting with Reg Cray and Parkhurst. I've got fucking lunatics coming around my dad's house for meetings. I've got my dad. I can spot a psychopath a mile off. I know if someone's a, a switch victim, a, a switch merchant. So I'm always on the lookout. So, yep, yeah, fighting a lot. When I got stabbed, I didn't deserve it. And what was that like after getting stabbed? You got stabbed how many times? Eight times? I got stabbed eight Near, times. Is that nearly dead? I'm provoked. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was a... Uh, I thought I was going to die. So if you've ever seen the film Chopper, when he gets stabbed in the courtyard and he pulls his T-shirt up and he's bleeding out and he's like, uh, what does he say to the fucking matey boy? Be, 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 bloody, be bloody early for Kung Fu, mate. Doesn't realise he's, he's been stabbed. So this fight kicks off outside a kebab house anyway. Uh, I've just been to a fucking another town clubbing. Mental story coming back, but we ain't got all day, but that's a fucking crazy story how, how I even managed to get back to East Grinstead. <laughs> And back then, nobody got stabbed in East Grinstead. Even now, it's sort of, you know, it's not like central London, it's not like Crawley. <coughs> it was unheard of. It could have been repercussion for previous fights that I'd had. And you know what, fair dues. I've never stabbed, let's make that fucking clear. I've never stabbed somebody up or fucking told somebody up. So you think, the thing, so what provoked that reaction from the fellow? Do you know? No, it, we, we think it's an unprovoked attack. Well, what they've done but was... you're thinking it could have been, you could have hit someone a week before, week before that, and they've seen you. Quite easily, Possibly. because fighting was a regular thing. Okay. So, in the kebab house, and I've got food in it by this stage. So, I've got kebab in one hand, fucking can of drink in another, and as I'm walking out to come to the entrance to leave, and I'm with two other pals as well, who, they're not built like me. They're not, they haven't got that fighting spirit in them. And we shouldn't have to either. And there's a bit of a commotion outside the front. And someone else was getting it put on. These geezers, four geezers, nice big fucking Mercedes parked up, big black one, like a gangster mobile. Older than me, I was about 19, let's say 20 at, at the oldest. I can see it's going off. Some, these geezers are putting it on some geezer. As we're trying to walk out, they then took their, put their attention on me, stuck it on me. My words were, and I've always used this word, don't act like a wally. That was it. Now I've got fucking, so there's four of them. Four gangsters in a big jeep, don't act like wallies. Yeah, don't be, <laughs> little, a, don't little be a wally. Like, little 19 year old lad. Yeah. <laughs> don't could, be a wally lad. Could have been twenty. yeah. <laughs> Grow up! <laughs> but, uh, so, can in one hand, kebab in the other, two mates behind me, four geezers fucking giving it plenty, something to me. Don't be a wally. Anyway, all the attention's now on me. This geezer in front of me is gobbing off, gobbing off, gobbing off, gobbing off. He's fucking rearing at me. Mate, like my old man was rearing at me before. It's like, right, okay, I'm, in, I'm gonna be in trouble here. Fuck, I'm going for this. Funny enough, the, the bloke that eventually stabbed me didn't say a word. He was just standing there in silence, just staring. I didn't think he was a problem. For someone who's so good at reading situations, mm. this geezer had my full attention. He's gone for me. So I've managed to lean back, Drop the kebab, drop the can of drink, get a good shot on him. Lovely, here we go, we're on. Anyway, 
I've had a fight with this bloke, got the better of him, left him uh, horizontal mm. as I've turned around because I knew there was more of them. And in my head, I'm thinking, fuck me, I'm with two blokes that haven't got a fight in them. Sorry. <laughs> if they're watching should, this. Should we name them? Yeah, no, <laughs> we won't name them because uh, one of them I still love with every beat of my fucking heart. Should we name the other one? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm only yeah. I'm only playing. No. Cool. So as I've turned around to see who was coming at me next, the geezer that was silent. Bam, he's come into me. Now I thought he'd hit me. <clears throat> I thought he'd just gone boom and hit me. Oh, it's like, fuck me, that's a heavy one in the solar plexus. I've got a lump that sticks out there. See, You'll be yeah. able to see that. Yeah, see. So that's the first one that's gone in and I didn't realise, so he's gone bosh. Stabbed me. I'm like, cool, fucking hell. So I'm still going for it. Boom, boom, boom. I just think he's giving me fucking shots, but he's not, he's, he's, he's plunging a knife in me. I'm trying to throw shots at him. I'm losing energy quick because it's, I'm bleeding now. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to punch him, I'm then trying to fucking bite him. I, I lost the sort of it, like the adrenaline went quick. The, the adrenaline kicked in quick, but it also, I lost it quick. So by the time I'm trying to throw shots at him, there was no power in him. By the time I'm trying to sink my teeth into him, I sort of almost feel like I'm, I'm falling unconscious. I'm fucking losing here, but I'm screaming, Liam, he's got a knife, run! When I've looked down and seen myself absolutely fucking mm -hmm. covered in blood, no problem, I'm running. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm on my toes. And if there's one thing I can say, luckily I, I, I'm here to live another fucking day. You get into an altercation now, because every fucker's carrying a blade for one reason or another. Either, either someone wants to be a gangster or they want to protect themselves from a gangster. You see somebody pull a, bl a blade on you, don't be a fucking hero, run, because life is a beautiful thing. And if you get over that, fucking drop your ego and fucking hit the bricks, run, you can have a beautiful life ahead of you. It ain't worth losing your life over a bit of pride. Put it on the pavement and run. So I've done a runner. And I've climbed over a bank, pulled my T-shirt up. Mate, fucking punch your wounds all over me. Oh, done me like a kipper. And he was coming up my body. The last one was in my head, but it didn't make a, a, a big dent. There's a massive miles bar under there, oh, you yeah. see that? So that's, that's not that big, isn't it? Fucking, mm. so he's working his way up. Long and short of it is, I've managed to get to fucking safety, got to the train station. Before I know it, I wanted a ride being a light. Hey, buddy, are you all right with this? Just get me a ride being a light. Remember, I remember that much. Yeah, mate, they're lovely. on the light back then and all? Bruh, they're lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got in, the, got in the ambulance and my, I will say him, fuck it, he's my best mate, Shane. I love him to fucking pieces. Okay, I know Shane. Yeah, you know Shane. Shane was there. Shane was a lot more worried than me. Shane's in the back of the ambulance crying his eyes out and I'm having a laugh with the fucking geezer who's like sort of patching me up and stitching me up. CID were there. As soon as I knew I weren't gonna die, I don't know whether this is a defense mechanism or it's just, it's just in me like, it's never bothered me. It's Even never, afterwards it hasn't bothered you? Never bothered me. It's, I, I mean, now PTSD is a big thing. Massive. I got uh, signed off, well not signed off, I got diagnosed with PTSD because I kept going out fighting afterwards. It didn't deter me from fighting. If anything, it made me worse. If, like, I feel threatened, bam. There was an incident where another, another fight. I'm just, I'm trying to say all this, just to like, just explain the anger that was in me and also what turned me into this fucking, I don't give a fuck machine. If it's on, it's on. If I feel threatened, it's on. I'm going for it. And consequence didn't even come into the equation. But back in the ambulance, my mate Shane's crying. I'm having a laugh and a joke. CID have come back and forth. I got discharged from hospital or I just discharged myself. I took my own fucking stitches out. And as I'm laying in bed with all these stitches in me, it fucking hurts getting stabbed. Afterwards, once the adrenaline's wore off, it's like, oh, that's fucking sore. And me and my mates always have a laugh and they're coming around and they're fucking making me laugh. And I'm like, mate, you've got to stop making me laugh. Every time you make me laugh, this one here in particular, fucking hell, killer. So that was the stabbing incident. I've not. Yeah, I've not fucking mentioned that for years. No, they got prosecuted. Did they get caught? They didn't get caught. I'm not going to say too much. Mm. A, I'm not here to be a gangster. B, I'm not here to fucking bubble myself up. It got dealt with. Mm. Of that, I made sure. End of chapter, we move on. Everyone's still alive. Mm. So it's not, you know, I'm not fucking, I'm not, I'm not proclaiming that I'm a, you know, I'm a fucking, I'm a cold blooded killer, but it got dealt with. At this time, was you talking to your dad? Well, what do we need to get, because your dad ends up getting 18 years, right? Dad ends up getting up eight, 18 years. What, what, yeah, yeah. what we've heard, because the stuff we've heard, stuff we've heard so far, does that carry an 18 year sentence? 
the minute? Was there other victims? Where, 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 what point? At what point? Could you, and how, does he okay. come back into your life? Is there, like, and, and then another point, mm -hmm. because people throw this at me, yeah? Your dad, this is where it's such a small, mad world. Your dad ends up being a leader of the English Defence League or, or a spokesman for the English Defence League, no? Yeah. I, I leave the English Defence League in 2015, mm -hmm. then your dad joins. And I mad, you, no? It, it's, it's extremely it's mad. fucking mad. And, yeah. And do you know what? We can do an old podcast down the line, so we, we, can miss out, we can miss out chunks and go straight to that because it is interesting, it's still on point, and we're still talking about the effects someone like that will have on a, on a young child and how you can really, really go... Like, let's, let's, before we move on to the EDL, yeah. let's remember, I've spent my life helping people building people up, building businesses, nurturing people, weathering individuals through the storm that they're in. Like, I've got a lot of empathy and a lot of love in me. If I see somebody in a cafe and they look sad, it makes me feel sad. I could have turned out to be a real nasty fucking human being because that's all I was taught by him. Thankfully, I used him as inspiration. Everything I don't want to be is him. So when people have had it tough in the past and they grow up to be a piece of shit and people say, well, they had a tough life and that's all they knew, I'm just not having that. And I'm gonna call it bollocks. Like, you get to a certain age where you know left from right, you know right from wrong. You know intrinsically if you're doing something bad to someone, whether it's fucking misleading them, deceiving them, lying to them, cheating on them, like you know what's fucking right and wrong, unless you're a total psychopath or a sociopath. For me, a bad childhood is not excuse to be a bad person. I could have been a bad person. I'm not. I like to credit myself. You could use it as an excuse for, every, for any failures. Exactly. Cause you, and, and, and at the same time, because I knew none of this. When we first started talking, I didn't know anything about your dad. Yeah? We got to know each other. I just knew this dude's successful. He's a, he's an he's a businessman. There was no mention. You didn't, didn't mention anything. First I saw was seeing it bang up on the news. And I didn't know about the EDL. Huh. I've never been political. When you popped up, I'm watching you on, on the internet through rebel media. So... Oh, yes, yeah, so this is after the EDL. The EDL's gone. I've left. Mate, I, so anyone watching this, I never... So when I, met, when I first met Tom, when you meet, like, knew each other and then become friends... We met at a boxing event, no? Yeah. Yeah, I never knew about the EDL. I never knew the... Where e were you, bro? Yeah, where the fuck was I? <laughs> I was in my own little bubble. Not caring, I, no. I, 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 This is very, very short, then we Not can move on. So I realised the way I was going. The, 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 the repetitive violence, sailing close to the wind, uh, nearly got jailed many, many times. Mental health got me off. Doctor, doctors know he's got PTSD. This has happened, that has happened. He's been stabbed multiple times. Uh, the last time I was definitely going to jail, it was going to be custodial. Ended up, some geezer said he was going to stab me. Fucking hell. I'm obviously not going to take that chance again. The situation was dealt with there and then. I should have gone to jail. I didn't have a fixed abode, I didn't have a job. You know, I was working on the door at the weekends for cash in hand. I should have gone to jail, and I'm aware of that. I had like a eureka moment. I like my liberty. I don't want to go to jail. I managed to get a job through a friend. Get me a job interview. Got me a job interview. I blagged my way through, the, through this job interview. Job interview doing what? Doing travel. Worked, worked in the travel industry, mate, and I've done very well. Selling holidays? Selling holidays. But you would be good at that. Over, just by naturally knowing you, because you're very good yeah. with your, your, your the gift of the gab. Over, over... Like a lyrical over, genius. Over the phone. Yeah. Over the phone. Over, over the phone, and yeah. Did, and, and was this your first proper settled job? So, yeah, it's probably... Yeah, it's not... It's, it's, probably, it's, it's worth mentioning. I was destined for jail. Hmm. I was aggressive. I was violent. I've got to be clear. I was no bully. I didn't exploit anybody. I was a defender. I was a justice warrior, and a lot of fights I would have. Don't forget, I was going out clubbing all the time. And back when, when, we, when we were fights. younger, it was violence everywhere. It's easy to get in fights. I, I was either going to stay in or I'm going to go out. And if I see somebody in trouble, I'm intervening. Which is what made me fucking great as a doorman. Because mm. then I'm fucking sober as a judge looking round, and anybody that I think is going to pounce on somebody for no fucking reason, I'm dealing with them. Mm. So it's always been in me to fucking protect people. But I was going to go to jail. I then went to the, the girl, the woman that was behind the counter at the club I used to work at the time. She was eight months pregnant, very visible. I said, I need you to come and court with me. I need you to say that's my baby and we're a, and we're a couple because I'm going to go to jail. And I've had this, this moment, I don't, I don't want to go to jail. I love life too much and people depend on me. 
I then said to my mate who I was living with, who I got work in the door, Jay, he fucking loved working the door. You never would have rumped as many birds as you did if you weren't working the door, geezer, be honest. <laughs> <laughs> he knows it. Uh, so I said to him, mate, get me an interview. I need a job. I, I cannot go to court with, with, no, with, with no job. I then went and got a rented accommodation. So by the time I come to court, now in my, in my defense, the, the guy didn't press charges against me, it was the police, because after that, people saw this, go, this bloke go fucking through a shop front window and I'm still throwing fucking lefts and rights. Uh, a load of rugby lads have then come up and it, looked, it looks like I'm the aggressor, so they start fighting me, so I start fighting them back. I'm outnumbered, so I'm then fucking taking my belt off and doing what you do to defend yourself. So to the naked eye, I, I look like fucking, I look like I was very much in the wrong. I wasn't, I was reacting to a fucking, to a direct threat. And this geezer was a known lunatic as well. He's now dead. Uh, I won't name him because his sister lives near me and she's a decent human being, but her brother was a fucking head case. And there was no way I was putting that to chance. I'm gonna stab you. Yep, you probably are. I better deal with you. So I end up going to court. Your Honour, I'm changed. I'm never gonna do that again. I'm changing my life, I've now got a job. I never, never had a job before. When I went for the interview, I'd done all these things to get me out of jail. I didn't even know what a space bar was. I lied to get the job. I copied the two people either side of me during the training course. Once I got put onto the sales floor, I said, can I speak to you in private, the manageress? I said, I've lied right up until now. I say lied, I've been very, very economical with the truth. I've never had a job before, and I've never used a keyboard before. I learned how to type by writing lyrics on a screen. I'd, I'd think a song in my head, told you, fucking ADHD, mm. and I'd write songs and I learned how to type myself. Didn't know, and I was used to fucking working the door, violence, fucking chaos. So how old are you at this point? I'm now 20s, I'm now in my, I'm now, I'm now in my 20s. And early 20s? Early 20s, okay. go to court, got a job. Here's the proof. Here's my pregnant missus. Here's my pregnant missus. There she is. Everything's alive. Undeniable. I, you've got to do what you've got to do to survive. Yeah. And I wasn't hurting anybody. Yeah. I was putting things together to set myself free to make sure I never was there again because I didn't want to be Peter Gillette. I wanted to be me. And I know that I'm I know that I'm put on this fucking earth to do good things. Helping people, I thoroughly enjoy doing. I get my kicks from fucking helping people. My dad gets his kicks from hurting people. We I've watched you do it. You have seen me do it. Even you, recently, you was disappearing up north. Well, when we were meant to meet up, you said, I've got to go. I think my mate's in a bit of bother, a bit of mm. trouble. I'm going to go up there. I've seen you do it loads of times. Geezer? Well, you've done it for a month for me, <laughs> You can't babysit me for a month. I flew to Spain several times. <laughs> we went on the, so, yeah. Turned me to a gym freak and again. That's what gets me to sleep at night. <laughs> I, 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 I like helping people. I like steering in the right direction. So that was that. I didn't go to jail. They gave me one... I'll show you the news article. It says, uh, attacker wept in the dock. I di I, I, I didn't, you pretended to cry, I didn't, didn't, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> what, what, I'd, what I'd done was, because I, I, I was prepared, like I was, I'm meant to go to jail. Yeah, yeah. And I probably would have never come out of the system. If I'd have gone in jail... He'd have fought, he'd uh, got more angry. Yeah, without a doubt. If I was as angry and as fucking game as I was back when I was younger, I would never ever would have come out, I'm sure of that. But something happened, something changed. I wanted to live a, a fulfilled life so when he said, we are not going to give you a custodial sentence, I've done this. I said, you will never see me here again. And they haven't. Would you say that's the moment you took, your life took a different direction? Oh, without a doubt, moment? yeah. I pushed it and pushed it. So I then, I threw, like anything I do, I throw myself into things. I, I, I commit we're, 100. We're addicts. I'm an addict. Yeah, so we're, yeah so in we're, anything. I'm if I go to the gym, I go three times a day. <laughs> I always, I always if I have a biscuit, I have 100. I always say that to Tom. <laughs> we're addicts. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're lunatics. So <laughs> I, I gave it 110%. I didn't just do well on the sales floor. I was then the success story within the company. When people would come through on the training courses they in their batches, they would Liam. say, this guy Liam, they called me Harvey on the phone. I then got promoted. I then had my own team. So I'm now managing a team of people, training salespeople, building salespeople up. I took the bottom office right up into the top five. Uh, then I realised I, I, my performance took a massive nosedive after that. When I realised that actually I want to do my own thing. I want to build my own business. Was it that you wanted to build your own business or was it that you 
were, I'll say myself, like, I can't have a boss. That's me. Don't tell me what to do. Yeah. For me. I'm a, was it that or was it that? It was all of it. I think, I think a good... Uh, yeah, I need to be the boss. Good driving force to build your own business is, yeah, you've got to ask yourself, do I like being told what to do? If I'm five minutes late somewhere, do I want to look at some fucking wank stain looking at his watch going, that wasn't for me. Or do I want to be the wank? Or do I want to be the wank stain looking at the watch? But you know what? <laughs> because of that, yeah. I've made sure I've never been the never wank stain. I've, I've, I've never been the wank stain. Like, I give people like, you know what? The stats don't lie. Yeah. Everything is based on performance for me. Meet me in the middle. You know, bring add value to my life, to my business, to, to anything, to my fa- If you add value, you, you get as much freedom as you want. Anyone that's ever worked for me, it's like, if you perform and you're reliable, you can treat this like it's your own business. Like, you, you ain't on the clock, you know, it's a fair exchange. So yeah, it's, it's made me a, a decent boss as well. But during the time as well, this is how I, I rekindled with my dad again. So remember I told you, going back, remember I told you the drugs were escalating? Yeah. So as I'm making my exit, when I'm a kid, 15, 16, my dad's now- Hitting hard drugs. Hitting heroin. Okay. He's also got his young girlfriend involved in heroin. The 16 year old he was with. He was also, he then started taking heroin with my cousin who's the same age as me, Graham, who's now sadly no longer with us. His heart- drugs. His heart gave up three or four years ago Mm -hmm. because of years of drug abuse. Now when he was 16, my dad was taking heroin with him. I was next on the list, Giza. I was next in line to take heroin. My dad, everything he was doing, he shared with me, he gave to me, yeah, he you, encouraged you, it. it. It was gonna happen. I cut the cord and I ran to my savior, my mum and nan. So this all sort of is entwined, because as I'm doing this normal job, I've now got a normal life. I don't, and you're succeeding? I'm succeeding, I'm getting promoted. I'm, 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 How's that feel? Great feeling, it's like, wow. Had you ever felt feelings like that? Uh, in your childhood with No, 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 no. I, I was showered with love by my mum and my nan, but I'd never really, uh, achieving something off your own back from your own actions is it, a powerful thing. And I encourage anybody to stand on their own two feet and just try something off their own back. And this, is, this can be as, as, as little as go down the gym. Don't wait until you listen to an influencer saying, you better go down the gym or you're gonna get fat. It's like, forget that. Wake up in the morning and think to yourself, I've got to do this for me. I don't need, I, I'm, encourage yourself. So if you do something off your own back, off your own encouragement, off your own motivation, that's a hell of a feeling when you succeed at something. So <clears throat> I was taken abroad, traveled the world, business class. With all, work? With work, with, okay. yeah, done, done a good job. Uh, put on stage, round of applause, given awards for, for my, my sales achievements and uh, yeah, it was a good feeling. It was a real good feeling. So my life is now back, well, I say back to normal. It's sort of normal for the first time. So yeah, so I'm, I'm winning awards. I'm being noticed for my achievements. Life's normal again. Not again. Life's normal for once. I've not got my dad influencing me. He's not part of my life. He's nowhere to be seen. It's great. And this is, again, why I push this message. There is no obligation to spend time with anybody you don't want to, whether they're blood relative or not. Like, you don't choose who your family are. You don't decide, oh, that's my uncle. It's like, he's your uncle fucking out of pure chance. If he's no good for you, fuck him. Don't ever ring him again. It goes with your mum and your dad and your brother and your sister. You know, you, anyone that's a fucking toxic leech around you, like, you're obligated to make sure you are happy and content. Your happiness is nobody else's responsibility other than your own. So you've got to start making some serious decisions. It's a process of elimination. You're bad for me, you're gone. Uh, so life was, life was great. I'm enjoying work. Again, I was addicted to work. I'd be working fucking seven days a week on Sundays. I wouldn't even, my friends would ring me, I'd say, be quick, I'm at work. Like, I literally lost contact with, with a load of friends, made new friends because you had a sales board and I'm in competition with them all, friendly, and I'd also help people that I was against. It's a fucking story of my life. However, I get a call one day, my life's normal again. I'm winning, I'm really, really winning. My fucking mum was proud of me. My cousin who sat there sent me a lovely letter with future millionaire written on it. Something like that, you know, it was lovely. Life's normal. The phone goes in the call center I'm working. My name was Harvey on the phone. Harvey, I'm on a call. I get a call back. 
Harv, you've got to take this call. Liam, you get called Liam at work, it's serious. Liam, you've got to take this call, okay. Hello? Liam, it's, I won't say, it's one of my dad's sisters. I won't say her name. None of my dad's sisters fucking care for him. My, my dad's one of seven or eight. Although he has got one. He's got one weasel brother. Fucking shame on you as well, because f you, you know what he's done and said to your wife, <coughs> and you still stand by him, knowing that he's been fucking, he's doing 18 years for unthinkable things, and you're still standing by him, you fucking weak cunt. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you for a conversation one day. <coughs> uh, there's a few people you'll see him. <laughs> yeah, there's a fucking list here. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? A few of these people need to be accountable and, and, and they need to fucking, they need to be confronted because all these sneaky little wankers, it's all behind a keyboard. It's all done in secret. It's like fucking own it. You believe in the fucking sex case and you want to stand by him. Have your picture taken beside him. Fucking have it on the mantelpiece. This is my brother the nonce. He's doing 18 years in Albany, but he's my brother and I love him. But you do it secretly and you're a fucking rat. Anyway, my brother was a fucking nonce. He'd be off the firm straight away. I'd fucking put him in a coma. Just like I testified against my own father for being fucking disgusting. Couldn't give a monkeys. I loved him, I still do. He fucking raped children. Had to go to jail. I was part of that process. We'll come to that. That is my greatest achievement. This phone goes, Liam, it's such and such, one of his sisters. Your dad's in a coma. He's overdosed on heroin. I hadn't seen him for years. In my mind, I was detached. Did they think he was gonna pass? Is that why they're ringing you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, like, it's game over for him. Goodbye. He got raided. Four and a half ounces of smack was on the table. How much he consumed, we don't know, but it's, it would have been enough to fucking kill an elephant. He swallowed it. Constitution was so fucking sky high, bam. Oh, yeah. And by this stage, he was fucking, you know, he weren't just smoking it, he was banging it up in his groin, fucking spraying blood all over people's fucking toilets. And oh, th th this, this is just fucking more outrageous stories. Mm. Could have been me. He wanted me to do exactly what he was doing. It could have been me that was in that coma. Thank fuck for my mum and nan. Thank fuck for my mum and nan. So he's in this coma. And you know what, man? Bam. I went straight back into he's my hero. I love him. I don't want to lose him. How old are you at this time? In my 20s now, mate. What, mid-20s? How long have you been yeah, working? Mate. How long from joining this career? How long did it take you from going into sales to get into this position of running the office? doing really well, feeling like a success. Well, I got, I got, the, I got the promotion after this. Uh, oh, after the dad thing. Yeah, 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 I, okay. I, I, I overcome that as well. Okay. And it, you may think it wasn't you in the coma, what was, what was there to overcome? I tell you what, you, dad's in the coma. You, you fucking, you look at your dad laying in a coma. Although I did do something remarkably outrageous, which, what did you do? which my cousin will vouch for me. So. I can I, believe you, go on, what I, was I'll, it? Tell you the, I'll tell you the full story. Yeah, go on. So, I hadn't seen him for ages. I hadn't seen it for a long, 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 long time. How long? How long's ages? Years. Four years, five years? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you've yeah, gone yeah. five oh, I, years I, with no contact with I disconnected. He was, okay. he was damaging. He was bad. He was abusive. I didn't realise it. You asked me earlier, when did I realise about the different levels of abuse? I can tell you about when I realised about the sexual abuse, when, when, when we get to that stage. Okay. But at this stage, I'm now going to Crawley Hospital. My dad's in a coma. I then turn up. I then walk in and everyone's in pieces. How the fuck he had so many people upset, I don't know. They should have been thinking, thank God for that, this cunt's gone. But no one knew the severity of him, just how bad he was as a person. Bit like the Jimmy Savills, mate, he does everything in plain sight. Ah, it's only Pete, that's what he does. Anyway, I walk in, he's got tubes hanging out of him, he's in the coma. Doctors basically put me in a private room, you know, you, the chances are strong, you're gonna lose your dad. I'm crying my fucking eyes out, geezer. I'm devastated. I fell to my knees. I fell to my fucking knees as I walked in there. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Screamed. Well, if you haven't seen him for five years and he's took a deterioration in the drugs, was he visibly, did he visibly look, look bad oh, compared man. to what you last remembered? Oh, him? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he now looked like a fucking skeleton. Okay. His, uh, where, where, where his feet were hanging out the bottom of the fucking sheets, his toenails were like that long and black. He was in a bad place. And he was always very vain, always looked after himself. Uh, very, very a clean freak, OCD, probably that's probably where I get it from. Yeah, he was core. Cool. He wasn't even half the man. In fact, he's not even a man full stop. He's a turd, so he wasn't even half the turd. That's the best fucking way to do it. He wasn't even half the turd he once was. He was like a fucking pebble of shit now. But 
Love is love and you can't help how you feel and you can't, you certainly can't help who you love. And I fucking still obviously loved him dearly and it like felt like I was being stabbed again. I fell to my knees, I cried my eyes out and I fucking gasped. And uh, the doctor said to me, your dad's gonna die. And this went on for a few days. And in between that, I weighed one of his mates in as well. This geezer's turned up to visit my dad or just obviously look at my dad. He was probably making out that like, he ain't going to get in trouble because it turns out he was there. He gave him the crack. He was involved. He was there. Yeah, he was. He was part of it. He was there when my, when when the gaff got raided. They couldn't nick anybody because my dad swallowed the evidence. Anyway, I'm there looking at my old man in a coma. I'm in absolute fucking pieces. This geezer's come in. A junkie. He obviously was, but he yeah, wasn't. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he weren't. He weren't like a fucking. No, you, no. Were, you wouldn't think. Yeah, he, he wasn't a stairwell junkie. Okay. Yeah. You could tell he was a drug user, tell he was off key, looked like a fucking madman. Uh, buoying me off as well. Buoying me off. Calling me son. Talking to me like I'm a fucking child. By this stage, I'm a fucking fully grown man. Not only am I a fully grown man, I stand on my own two feet. I'm a fucking high flying before at my job. I'm providing for everybody around me. I'm looking at my dad in a coma. I'm beside myself with grief. And you're sort of tapping me up, calling me son, talking to me like I'm a fucking child. So I said, right, he's not allowed any visitors, like, let's leave. I said, let's get in the lift. I said, so fucking, I called his brother. I said, what happened, like, you know, when you, when you got done? Because I could tell. I just, I just, I just in, intuitively knew he was part of it. So what happened anyway? Oh, fucking, everybody, old Bill's come in, and your old man's fucking, there's, there's the parcel on the table, and he's gone, boom. It's like, right, okay. I said, well, I said, it's best you never go near my old man again. Don't tell me who I can go near and who I fucking can't go near. I said, well, no, I'm... Ain't a, ain't a discussion, I'm telling you, don't go near my fucking old man again. Once he comes out of this, and I didn't think he was, I said, he's getting straight, stay away from him. Who do you think you're fucking talking to? Anyway, as we've come out of the hospital, I've given him the fucking hiding of his sorrowful life. I'm talking, I beat the fucking daylights out of this cunt. Think you can boy me off? Think you can mug me off and, and tell me about my old man? I'm looking at him, he looks fucking dead. And you're calling me son, tapping me on the fucking shoulder. Was it that, or did you how, did you hold did you in your eyes did you hold him partly responsible for all the of state it. your dad was in? All or of it. Or did you want someone to blame for the state your dad was in? Oh, I didn't need to blame him. He was. Uh, I was in my mind. I was justified to weigh him in for several reasons. One of them, I'm fucking standing there, grief stricken, crying my fucking eyes out. And if I ask you to stay away from your dad, and he and he's dad. talking to me like I'm a fucking boy tapping me like I'm a fucking six year old and then going against my wishes when I say, don't go near him again, he's gonna come off heroin. And he's talking to me like I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah. He's fucking lucky it stopped when it did. He's lucky I weighed him in outside the hospital. Perfect place for him, scrape this piece of shit up and deal with him. So I left him there. Yeah. Got in the car, fucked off. That was one fucking mad story that's going on there. During the week, my old man's in his coma. They wanted to turn the life support machine off. This is my old man's fucking claim to fame. My Liam fucking wouldn't let him turn the uh, life support machine off because he loves me so much. It's like, yeah, I did love you that much. I didn't want to see you die. So I said, no, we're not turning any fucking machine off. In the space of a week, first, he's going to die. Then if he comes round, he's going to be brain damaged. They don't know where he's in. Then hmm. they've got to sedate him. Then he's coming round real quick. When he comes out of the coma, he come out of a smile on his face. The most maddest fucking experience of my life. Remember I said to you I'd done something mad and I looked at my cousin for, yeah, to, to vouch for yeah. me. I've got a video camera. Video back in the day, like one of these big fucking things. Yeah, yeah. Didn't have iPhones. It's only thing. The doctor said to me, you cannot take that in there with you. It's forbidden. You absolutely must not. I said, no problem. I respect your wishes. I won't do that. I done that. I took the video camera in and I recorded him. You're in a coma. Look at what you've done. Look at the fucking two and eight of you. You're a mess. You're laying there dead in front of me. Just to show him, and I did show him. I also positioned him as, he, as he'd laying there like this. This is the outrageous thing. I positioned his fingers like this. So he's laying there in a cup. Tell me you've got this video. He's laying there in a cup. He's laying there in a cup. We may still have it. It might, but it'll be on one of them like, them, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, a witness yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, Sounds mental, I know that. And I know a lot of people on these podcasts, you think, oh yeah, I'm sure that happened. Mm -hmm. So they rattle off their bullshit. So we, I've had him laying there like that in this fucking, in this coma, like this. 
Do you know what I'm picturing here? I'm, do you know what I'm picturing here? I'm picturing him my son and what it, what it would be like for my son if I was laying in a bed like that and what he would be going through. Heavy. So, Heavy. Yeah, so that Heavy. the effect that this must have. Because every it doesn't matter what your dad's done. Your dad's your hero. Well, if he's raping, but he hadn't raped you at that time, but if we go, or at any time, but if we. What's that like standing in front of your dad? For you? <laughs> Sorry. He didn't rape me ever. No, no, he didn't rape you at all, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> he'd he done other things that I reflected on that was that was sexual abuse, but yeah. He, but uh, he got done for raping other, other Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll go right into that with yeah, you, no problem at so, all. But, but what's that but like it, for you? Oh it was it was uh it was beyond comprehension. Did you video him like this? Because you want to show him when he went. Oh back. yeah, oh yeah, I weren't fucking. Here you go, Dad. Yeah, I wasn't uh Here you go. I, I, I See yourself. Look I, at yourself. I, I done, when I knew he was going to come round. Yeah. I done the finger thing. It's quite funny. I yeah. deal with stuff with humour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, nothing's going to crack me. Nothing mm. is going to fucking uh, bring me down. Mm. And however I deal with it, as long as I'm not hurting no one, I'm going to deal with it. But to see your old man in a coma like that. Now, bear in mind, I didn't even like him because he'd he'd already ruined my mental health. I mean, I was a fucking I was in a pickle. It hurt so bad. It cut so deep, and because he is unaccountable, me recording him in that that that, to make him that was to show him, look at you, and I was a good job I did because when he came out of his coma, he thought it was hilarious, like he fucking mental cunt, thought it was hilarious, convinced that CID had snuck into his ward, got him out of his bed. Took him to a fucking crack party where he was fucking prostitutes and smoking a pipe. <laughs> fucking CID. Liam, I'm fucking your life. That's another thing he used to do, swear on my life all the time when he was lying. When he got fitted up, he got, he got another eight years. This is, this is before that. Uh, big troll, Joey Pohl, senior. He was part of it. Reg put a firm together. Million pounds worth of opium. I'll wrap this up real quick. My old man's on remand. I want to visit, my old man must have said this fucking God knows how many times. Liam, I've been fitted up every time he's fitted up. Every time he's fucking done something, someone's fitted him he's up. He's telling everyone now, saying. He's telling everyone now, yeah. He's always playing the victim. Mm. Narcissist 101. He doesn't care how he gets control and power or to manipulate. He'll do it. He'll be the victim or he'll be the aggressor. As long as he wins and gets control here, he doesn't care. So when he's accused of something, when he's banged to rights, I swear on your life, he said, may you drop down dead now with cancer. I've been fitted up, I didn't do it. What was he accused of? Million, uh, uh, robbing a million pounds worth of opium? Have? Selling a million pounds okay. worth of opium. That's what he's talking about. He, he, he was part of the firm that okay, was, that was that, that done this. Giza, he got a guilty. The jury got nobbled. Joey Pyle got 14, my old man got eight. A few others got fives and sixes. Now, Joey Pyle, if he'd have known anything about my man, he wouldn't have anything to do with him. He was a, he was a well-respected villain, Joe Pyle Sr. But Reg put them all together. My old man hoodwinked everyone. My old man fucking had Reg wrapped around his fucking finger. Reg wanted to fuck my old man. It's a fact. Uh, sorry, Reg. People, these hardened villains that fucking have got cray paintings up are going to be like, ow, that's like blasphemous. It's like, no, it is what it is. He was gay. He had a gay, he had a boyfriend. Uh, towards the end of his sentence, and uh, yeah, don't think for one second he had a fucking younger bloke in his cell day in, day out, and didn't want to fuck him. He did. But like, anyway, my old man, swear on your life, mate, you drop down dead with cancer if I'm telling a lie. I've been fitted up, I'm innocent. Mate, not even a year later, he's on Scotland Yard on the telly. Oh, look, there's Peter. Oh, look, there's Peter's car. Oh, look, Peter's getting out of the car, undoing his boot. Oh, he's got two bin liners full of opium. Put them in somebody else's boot. Oh, they had him on record. Recorded the whole fucking thing. They'd all been under surveillance. There was an undercover fucking old Bill, all part of the firm. Mm. He couldn't have been any more banged to rights if he tried and still claimed he was fitted up and swore on my life, may I drop down dead with cancer. If he's telling a lie, he's innocent. Explain that one, Pete. Cunt of a man. So... Where were we before I jumped back you, to you that? You were that he just he just woke up. He's woke oh, yes, up. Oh yes, so come out, come out. Making up was bullshit. Come out, come out the uh, come out the coma. Convinced that CID had snuck him out to crack parties, rumping brasses, and then put him back in his room. Don't tell no one, Pete. It's like wow. He also was convinced that above Crawley Hospital. Was he convinced from this because he's in the middle of a mental psychosis? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Period. Still completely tripping out. I mean, he yeah. he, he took like. An amount of heroin that would fucking yeah. would kill an elephant. And he's probably seen all these things, possibly. Yeah. 
Oh, w- without a doubt, he's he's hallucinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's tripped out. I mean, I've, I'm fucking. It, it actually fucking kills and disturbs me to say that I have tripped out so heavily when my old man was giving me acid on fucking purple micro dots when I'm taking two or three at a time. I fucking seen things that didn't happen. But when I come off the trip, I knew, cool, those drugs were heavy. But he's come out weeks. He still thinks How it's long going he in on. A coma? In a coma for a week. Okay. He also believes it's all uh, again very sexual with my old man. He also believed that above Crawley Hospital is a big lake and there was a swan and he'd walk up to this lake and he'd stand by the side of the lake and there'd be a swan and it'd swim to him and then it would turn into a nurse, half nurse, half swan and he'd be having sex with this fucking swan nurse by the side of the lake. Then he'd do his business. Sleep. And is he telling you this? Yeah, Once mate. he comes out. Geezer, four months later. Dad, come on, bro. Four months later. So when he come out to come, mm. he's shuffling around. Shuffling. I mean, any, any, anyone that's any any uh, anyone that's fucking been hooked on smack, or has clucked, or has, you know whatever in recovery, you do this shuffling thing. You scratch your legs. You fuck. You know, it's. Uh, I would never ever fucking wish that on anybody. Although he fucking deserved it, I'm glad he went through that, and I hope he's going through it did now. He, did he come off of that then? Did he get? Clean Eventually, off? he did get clean off heroin. Mm. Four months later, after coming out of hospital, though, I've took him down Tillgate Park. Anyone from Crawley will know Tillgate. They'll know the lake. They'll know where people do the fucking canoeing. And they'll know where the swans are. Me and my old man, I'm the trying ha- to... The half nurse one. Bruv, swan has swum up to us. He's gone. You see? You know the swan. You know the swan. Right. Yeah, they probably think we've got bread. You fucking mad cunt. So... It's not here to fuck you, Pete. Yeah, Pete. <laughs> That's not a nurse. I'm going to turn into a nurse, bro. Yeah, it's a true story, mate. Oh, well, and that's what he was... I'm so glad that, that he's here, because mm. he can vouch for all mm. this, because it's just, it's so, it's so outlandish. So anyway, uh, he's then... And is your relationship at this smack. point, he's come off smack, are you having a normal relationship with him? I've dad? forgiven him for You've everything, him? because I'm hurt. What's your mum and, what's your mum and nan saying about this, at this time? Horrified that I'm... Back involved. That I'm back in touch with him, yeah. What's your work life going like? Horrified. Back involved. In? Work life was keeping me sane, but I was struggling because... If I've ever had PTSD, it will be from when I saw him in the coma. Not when I got stabbed. The, the drug-induced psychosis that I stayed in for about a good three years, where I was crippled with anxiety, lost my mind. I'd be laying in bed, mate, when I was a kid, where, my, where he'd fuck my mind up so badly with drugs. I had a, I'd a girlfriend, she had come, you know, we was too young to even spend the night together. That's how young we were. She would go home, we'd, we'd fucking watch a film, and I'd be laying there and I'd think she was there. Her name was Katie. Kate, Katie, is that you? Then I'd think, oh, it's a fucking ghost. I'd put my head under the covers. I thought figures were in my room. I was fucked from the drugs he gave me. So that was very damaging. And when they say, say no to drugs, kids, like, say no to drugs, kids. <laughs> Uh, it's lucky I came back from it. That was very, very fucking disturbing. Seeing him in a coma was disturbing. Uh, I then forgot all of the fucking atrocities he committed and how he treated me because I'd seen him dead. You know, it's like, you know, you, you find forgiveness in someone when, when you think you're never going to see him again. It's strange, especially your dad that's got an impact that when he speaks, you get butterflies. Well, most it, families do that. They don't talk for 10 years. One of them gets terminally ill and bang, they're all talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All forgiving each other for whatever's gone on. Nothing matters. Yeah. This time, when we get to it, I will never, ever show him forgiveness. He's no. fucked. And do you know why? Remember I told you I'm a fucking justice warrior? I've spent my life looking after people, which is why I was perfectly suited to fucking work the doors. Mm. Because I now know what he's done to other people. Which you didn't know. Which I didn't know at the time. As a child. So I can, okay. I can, I've always been able to forgive him what he's done to me. I feel like my shoulders are broad enough to deal with it, but I know what he's done to other people. I ain't ever forgiven him for that. And the fact that he's called them liars and he's tried to torment them even more and put them through more fucking torture, fucking animal. So we can, we can get to that. So yeah, he's come out of the coma. My work life was affected. They understood. It's not every day fucking someone says, hey, my dad's in a coma. He's just swallowed fucking four ounces of smack. They was cool. Plus I was a high achiever, so they, they wanted me back to get the sales in. Mm. So eventually that, all, uh, that was all back on track. I then got promoted from there and life was grand. Uh, I then realized that my dad's never gonna change. He went back on fucking smack. As Soon as that happened, I'm out of here. He'd wreck his sister's fucking house, burning holes in a uh, in a sofa, 
banging up in the fucking bathroom downstairs, blood splattered up the walls. And then when his sister, when his sister said to him, Peter, I have got children in the house. My son and daughter still live here. I have friends coming round. There's Was blood. Was he living with her then? Yeah, she put him up. Okay. Everyone that's ever done him a good turn, he fucks them. He had nowhere to go. She put him up. What, what? She tried to look after him. When eventually he wasn't changing and she realised that he's actually still on heroin, he used my phone one night. I read his message. He'll be active again soon, bear with me. Called the geezer up. Hello, it's Peter. That ain't a Peter Gillette. That's not, that's not Peter Gillette. That's what he was saying. My mate will remember this because he was there. I said, you do me a favour, don't fucking... All right, stay away. Again, he gave me the same sort of verbal, the, the, the same kind of verbal the bloke gave me outside the hospital because we weren't face to face, he fucking lived to tell the story. Uh, so I cut the call with him again. You, you're not stopping. And then I then got on with my life. I then find out he's fucking burgling houses. Here we go, criminal mastermind. Old shit for brains. And this is a bloke that, that tells the world how intelligent he is. How bright and how clever he is. When my man got banged up for burglary this time, he didn't just get banged up for one. He got banged up for a whole chain of burglaries. Do you know why? Because he left his fag butts at every scene of the crime DNA. So, shit for brains. Not only do you go and rob a fucking post office that isn't open, not only do you fucking get involved in a firm where there's undercover plod that you don't notice that and you've been fitted up, you then go and burgle people's houses at Christmas as well, the slag. He fucking robbed, he burgled people's houses at Christmas, but he left the butts of his snout at all the different addresses that got burgled. His DNA, he got done for the lot. Absolute brains of a fucking rocking horse, the geezer. So that was in my way again. I could get on with my life. Uh, from there. You still in sales? Have you left sales? Set up your own business? At what point did you do that? I set up my own security firm 2009 2009 so was that straight, 29. straight from sales straight to that yeah i sort of there was a transition i realized that i realized that i'm making people a lot of money and i'm capped and i'm burnt out and it's thankless i'm grateful for the experience i learned a hell of a lot i mean fucking hell i learned about the corporate world i mean fuck me you People think like villainy and like gangsters are ruthless. Fucking hell, you wanna get you wanna you wanna get a sales job in the corporate industry? Fucking hell, sharks. They don't get they're sort of socio sort of they got sociopath tendencies, mate. They just care about the next buck. Fuck you, you're just a fucking number, you're just a figure. But uh but just no violence incorporated. They fuck you in other ways. Not that I'm giving salespeople a bad name, because I am one. Uh but I like to do it with a little bit of honour. I like to give the benefits of why you should use my service rather than lie to you and fucking take your money and not do what I promise. But I then decided I, I, wanna, I wanna work for myself. Uh, I don't wanna be answerable to anybody. I didn't need managing when I was doing sales either. I was a workaholic. I've I done sales now. I, I was a salesman as well. Mad, it. it. You're the best salesman in the country. My, sa my salesman job was to, I used to have uh, trackers, minor planet come, and I've done it because I was going to jail as well. It was when I lost my career for my first offence and it was, my job was to get an appointment with the transport manager, that was my job. So all I'd done was look up the company, who's the transport manager, his name's William. Yeah? I'd then ring up, uh, uh, no, I'd see who the owner of the company was, then I'd look who the transport manager is, I'd ring up the transport manager, I'd say, yeah, I was playing golf and I spoke to your, spoke to your um, CEO, spoke to the top, uh, your, your managing director, he's told me to book an appointment with you so we can sit down and show you. So I'd, I'd get the appointment every time, because I'd just mm. lie. <laughs> I'd get the appointment and all I got, my, 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 um, my payment was on booking the appointment. But I'd done sales as well, man, in, in Minor Planet. Don't you start cropping that him saying he was lying. Yeah, I was lying. Well, yeah. I, thought, I, I was lying, I was just, and I got paid on booking those appointments, and then it was the person's job to go in and sell the, it was trackers on cars, car, car tracking systems on people's work vans. I mean, <laughs> sales is such a fucking useful tool. Mm. I mean, you, every day you're selling yourself. Mm. Every single day you meet somebody, you put your best foot forward, hi, I, I'm, I'm this person and I can add this value to your life. Even in friendships, you've got to sell yourself. Mm. You've got to let the person know, you know what, you can, what you can bring to the table. So yeah, sales was a real, real good learning curve for me, and it was a nice way of living a normal life uh, because I was, it was so dysfunctional before then. And then I started my own security firm, and then uh, 
because it was security working the door, it all started pubs and clubs, all rough and ready, with the arse end of security. You're back in violence. Back surrounded by, surrounded by, surrounded by violence again, and I've always got that protective fucking thing in me, and if I see somebody in trouble, I'm in there, act first, think later. I mean, we could do a podcast on just the fuck. We, we, we won't, but like, the doors. It, just the doors alone. I mean, I've been in some fucking, some outrageous mm. situations, and I've... What year is this? You sat in a security company, which year? September 2009. Not talking to your dad? Not you, talking you to you my dad, but, but then what he'd done was he then come, he always creeps his way in, he always finds a way in. He loved the fact that I run a door firm. He loved the fact that I've got fucking doors scattered about here, there and everywhere that I've got, you know, I've got control of. He loved it. Oh yeah, my, my, my boy runs a fucking door firm. He's using it as clout for yeah. him. Uh, and then to fast track, because we could talk about doors for ages. Yeah, how uh, do we get on to... Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell, because it, 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 it's, yeah, it, it's, it's business. And I started talking to him again. When his dad died, I don't refer to him as my granddad, I call him his dad. Was he a scumbag? No, he wasn't a scumbag, he was a Mormon priest. I mean, outrageous. My, my dad is whoever he fucking is, lost, degenerate piece of shit. But uh, he's got a sister who's a Jehovah's Witness. And his dad was a Mormon priest. Her art's in the right place, she'll be watching this. You fucking drive me mad with your text messages trying to preach God to me and Jehovah, for fuck's sake. Chill out. And uh, his old man was a Mormon priest. Uh, his other brothers and sisters, I could talk to you about them as well. One of them we've lost recently, Andrew. He was lovely. He deserved to live. This is the heartbreaking thing. My dad's brother, Andrew, he deserved to live and my old man should have died years ago. It would have saved a lot of other people's lives. But, uh, so yeah, my old man started getting back into my life. And then what my old man used to do was- What year is this? He starts getting back in. In my thirties. His dad died. But if you've set your company up in 2009, where's your dad step back in? Fucking hell. Let's say, let's say 2010, 2011, okay. something like that. Okay. Uh, it was a few years, because I, st- I, I kept him at arm's length. I've not spent much time with my dad in my adult years. Okay. I mean, it, it, probably, it probably, because we're talking about him, yeah. it probably sounds like, fuck me, like Liam and his dad were like this, like, no. maybe I, I may have spent in my adult life, let's just say a dozen times with him. I've had a dozen encounters with him. Yeah. Every time he manages to fuck things up and ruin things and try and sabotage, anything good I've ever done. So, the, and my nan used to tell me, your dad was jealous of you even when you was a kid, even when you was a baby. If somebody's giving me attention, he wants it. Anything, typical narc. Christmas day, he'll ruin it for everyone. Ruin it for everyone. Dinner gets served, picks up the turkey, obviously more meat on a sparrow's knob. The fucking, whoever's been slaving over the fucking hob all day, well that's disheartening. Birthdays. Anything that wasn't him being the centre of attention, he'd sabotage. And I've learnt about my old man the older I've got. So the business he was jealous of. He used me for clout when it suited him, but he tried to fuck things up. He'd go on Facebook. I've also got a fucking, another story, I've, I've also got a fucking younger brother in my town who's sort of 40 years younger than me because my old man went on Facebook, started chatting up. This was before Facebook was a, was a public forum that you would use to prom- promote businesses. This was like when it was Friends Reunited. I was just about to say Friends Reunited. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, old school, weren't we? Yeah, that's when I was 18. Yeah, so we... Yeah, this, so this is, this is a lot later than that, but mm. he befriended somebody I went to school with, met up with them, slept with each other. Nine months later, she's got a child. He's heavily, heavily autistic. Uh, I've never met him, nor has my dad. I don't know what the fuck you'll be watching this, don't know what the fuck you were thinking doing that. Crazy. Wow, in fact. What the fuck was you thinking? Never had the conversation with her. I have seen her once and I looked at her and I was sort of gobsmacked and just looked at her in disbelief and thought, whoa. What, because she was having a relationship with your dad? One night, One they, night. they was chatting each other up and this is what he said. This is how much he thinks of himself. When he told the story, this is pretty graphic, this is going on Rumble, yeah? Mm. So my old man is telling the story. She turned up Little Lampton, took some Viagra, made sure I could get it up. Said some derogatory things about her as well, which is, that's nothing out of the ordinary. Don't take that personal about you, but this is how he described the encounter. She's on top of me. He goes, she knows I'm gonna come. She knows I'm gonna come. As I'm coming, she's pushed right down on me. 
She's sucking all the cum out of me, sucking all the cum. That's what he's saying, sucking all the cum out of me. Deliberately got pregnant. She wanted my baby. She rolled over. Apparently, my dad's words, I've just been fucked by the legend. <laughs> Fuck. Mate. Oh. Simon. <laughs> oh. I've been fucked by the legend. <laughs> I, I, I told you the story when he when he went to someone's funeral. You know, if we take the abuse out, and we take a few of the other things out about his dad. There's some quite funny situations. This, this is this is the problem. This is the problem because he's such a lunatic. He could be a bit. <laughs> yeah, but that's dangerous. In man. a bad way. Yeah, he thinks everybody fucking loves him. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, bruv. I've just been fucked by the legend. It's like no, no she didn't say that. She never said that, did she? That's that's in your that's in your mind, Peter. He's a legend in his own underpants. That's the that's the bottom line. So anyway, going back to fucking him sabotaging my business, he's then contact he's, he's then contacting. So this woman, she, she's as not nine months later as a baby. Nice one. Anyway, back to him sabotaging my business. He's then contacting my staff. You do know why you're standing on the door, Liam, sitting at home with his feet up and fucking, you're getting paid that, and he's charging the client that, and boom, boom, boom. They're then calling me. I'm like, well, you, you do realise that is business. You do realise if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have a door to stand on. But that's how it works. But why would your dad be doing that? Because he wants to sabotage any, any, anything. And he doesn't, doesn't just do it to me. Okay. He does it, and I, I now know this. I've now learnt to know who he is. He does it with absolutely everybody he comes into contact with. There was a guy, a friend of his. Now this, this geezer, he, he, I won't say his name. He was getting married. Now anyone that knows my old man would know you would never invite Peter Gillette to a wedding because he would think it was his wedding day. Fact. He's made up stories about how he's been to a wedding before and the fucking, and the groom's speech, he didn't really mention his bride he just mentioned how delighted Peter Gillette was. He can't believe that Peter's turned up to his wedding. A round, round of applause for Pete. Mate, he's next fucking level narcissist. So this geezer is getting married and he was one of my dad's, he wasn't a friend really, he was an associate. My dad would have called him a friend. He likes to call everyone his friend. Most people can't fucking stand my dad for obvious reasons. He's a cunt. But he's not been invited to this guy's wedding. Obviously. My old man wants to know why he's not invited to his wedding. Oh, it's a, it's a small gathering, boom, boom, boom. Anyway, what my old man done, which I now know and have now seen, what he does to anybody that disagrees with him or doesn't do what he wants them to do, he then started branding this bloke a nonce and a rapist on the internet. So now- From his own perf profile. From his, yeah, from oh, my I'm not secretly doing it. Oh, no, no, no. Calling him out. My old man does it. Spreading stuff about him. He does it, yeah. Oh, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't hide away. He does it so it adds credence. Because most people would think, well, there's no way he's lying. He knows him. Yeah. It's his mate. What, what, why, why would somebody tell such a great big lie like that if it wasn't true? But it's like, well... Because he didn't get invited to the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you doing being friends with a nonce then? But he'd done it to everybody. He also done it to somebody within the EDL movement, who he had a clash with. Oh, I know this one. Yeah, he got a... He, got a, uh, he, made, he, it, he yeah. created a fake... It was an incident report, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he doctored it as if it was his rap sheet and basically put in there that it was a paedophile. Posted it on the internet, made a video about it. I mean, anyone with half a brain could see, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's an incident report sheet. That's, yeah, but mud sticks, man. And especially mud so, sticks when people want mud sticks. So people who don't like that person anyway, will use that mm -hmm. coming from someone within the own movement and batter them with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't true. Mm. The guy, I, I certainly won't be saying his name to, add, to, you know, to bring it back to life, but no, no, he no. clearly fucking, I know, I know you know it is, but yeah, he mm. proved this is an absolute fucking lie. It's a disgrace that he, that he would even suggest such a thing, but I learned that my old man done it with everybody. Anyone that my old man fell out with, I, if I had to think really hard about it, I could probably name 20 people that my dad's fallen out with and he's called them a nonce or a grass uh, or a rapist. They're his favourite go-tos because he knows he's done so many years in jail, he knows they're the worst things you can brand somebody. He doesn't think what that would actually do to a human being in Civvy Street. You're actually trying your hardest to, to destroy someone's life. He's now doing time for those yeah, things. Yeah. And this is the thing. 
What my dad does is, which I didn't know, Project. he projects everything he's guilty of un onto other people. And he also does a preemptive strike. He calls you out for things that he is before you've called it out. Oh, he's only saying that because I said that about him. He just operates in such a dysfunctional fashion. He, his purpose built and his driving force is to destroy people. So, so this podcast doesn't go on for fucking 75 days. I'm then sort of back, kind of in touch with him. I've only probably spent a dozen times with him, proper encounters, because he's overbearing and he's unbearable. I'll give you an example before we then go on to the abuse, because that's obviously, that's the, that's the meat and gravy of this, what people are gonna to wanna to be interested in, I know that. Uh, my front door goes. No one turns up my house uninvited. And no one does that anyway. I wouldn't, I, would, I wouldn't go to anybody's house in this day and age uninvited unless like, I was fucking in Liverpool and a mate of mine lived there and I knew that he'd be pleased to be surprised. Knock on the door. I open the door. It's my old man. Oh, this cunt. Comes in like a fucking Tasmanian devil. Million miles an hour. Ba 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 Fucking wall. It's like, whoa! Slow down. Slow down. Chill out. What are you talking about? In my ear, I said, do you want a cup of tea? Yeah, yeah, I'm at a cup of tea. In my kitchen, my old house, long kitchen, and at the end, when you go out to the garden, there was a step, a step up. There's the floor, there's the step to go outside. I'm making a cup of tea here. Now, the only thing I've said to him is, mate, oh, slow down. Like, you're saying so many things at once and I, I, I can't compute what you're saying. This is madness. I didn't even say it was mad, I just said, whoa, slow down, chill out, I'll make you a cup of tea. I'm making him a cup of tea. I'm standing there making him a cup of tea. He stood on this step, so now physically he's above me. He's towering over me. As I'm making him a cup of tea, out of nowhere, he's gone, odd one, fucking rings around you. <laughs> I said, that's nice. <laughs> and I thought, by this stage, I'm sort of used to his madness. Also, when I was a kid, just another little fucking thing that he said that me and my mates still laugh about. Out of the blue again, just thought it was time to insult Liam, time to bring him down a peg or two, or time to fucking mug him off in front of his mates. All my friends are there. He said to me out of the blue, he goes here. He goes, I'd out fight you, I'd out fuck you, and I'd out dance you. Oh, you ain't out dancing you, buff. No one's out dancing me. I've seen you dance. Good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he ain't out dancing. <laughs> but what sort of dad says that anyway? What sort of a human being says that? Just a, just a lunatic of a man. So, yeah, he tried everything he could to fucking belittle me. Mm. If he come to watch me play football when I used to fucking play... He'd have done it better. He took the piss out of me. Black he mugged me off. He turned up at fucking training. He walked onto the centre of the pitch one day, kids under 10 years of age, because the ref made a bad decision, and threatened him with Reggie Cray. We had letters all back from the fucking, from the football club. <laughs> oh, mate. Some poor fucking bloke referee in Sunday League is being, Reggie Cray. being threatened with Reggie Cray. Because he, oh, God, God. Yeah, because he didn't call the offside. Yeah. Fuck. It's like, mate, you, you, you mad, mad cunt. <coughs> so he, stand, he stands over you. What for? Saying what? So, I'd, yeah. I'd ring around. I'll ring. run fucking rings around you for no reason. So I've laughed. I said, yeah, all right, yeah, whatever. Funny thing is, within 40 minutes, he's talking about how he's now doing this fucking thing for charity. Turns out it's not for charity. What thing? Where he, this is sort of ties into the, the ink toner cartridge scenario. So my old man would go around to industrial estates, schools, fucking schools, uh, colleges, and he'd say, any old toner cartridges you've got, I'm from cancer research, I get them recycled and I give the money to cancer research. I now know that what he does is he probably gives 50 pence to cancer research, uses that badge, so he gets the money from the recycling company. Seems legitimate, typical fucking pick, probably the most honest thing he's ever done, to be fair. Never done a day's work in his life, the fucking shit house. Uh, so that was the new thing that he'd done. And when he's telling me how he's now got his van and he's going straight and it's like, well, good job, mate, because you made a real bad criminal. <laughs> you, you should have gone straight from the start, you fucking thick idiot. Uh, so he's telling me about this, I'm like, okay, right, so you, you've got an accountant, you, you, so you're self-employed, right, okay, so you, you're claiming your mileage back from your diesel van. No, it's gone like this, I sat there like all confused. I said, it's a good job you can fucking run rings around me, innit? 
You don't even know that you can fucking get your mileage back from your van, you prat. A minute ago, you were running rings around me. So, he always become, funny enough, as we go on, and I say this because in time, and this is how you disarm someone that's abusive, you either fucking kick the daylights out of them, then you end up in jail, or you make them the butt of the joke and you ridicule them, which I superbly done, which ended up in court as part of his evidence. Oh, mate, which, which hell, bro. We'll have to get to that. Yeah, I want the video. Yeah, you'll get the video, right? Yeah, yeah, let's put it in there. Yeah. It's, mate. People, it's, people, it's coming, yeah? Yeah, it's... We'll get onto it, go pe on. People will think I'm not of sound mind. No, but, oh, uh, no. Yeah, go on. so... <laughs> where were we with that? Where, 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 where were we? So, you do, he's, he's telling you what his new career is. Sorry, mate, yeah. What he's doing. So, I've had to let you're him know that if you're self-employed, yeah. So, I'm laughing at him. He's, yeah. now, he's, now the, he's, he's now the joke. Yeah, see you later, dickhead, off you go. Uh, and then, to fast track to the big thing that made the newspapers. Because the big thing that makes newspapers for me I meet you, I become friends with you, and I'd never heard any of this. No. And then I just see, pop. that's where I was, I just saw it popping up on the papers. Well, you, what? You wasn't part of the EDL when my dad started talking for the EDL. I'd left the EDL, didn't know it was your dad. Yeah. Didn't know, didn't know who he was. And I didn't know... What the EDL was. And I didn't know you was the founder of the EDL. Yeah, yeah you just saw me from Rebel, yeah. Yeah, I saw you from... Some fucking, I mean, so we get in contact. Look, look, looking back now, I must have been living under a rock, but mm. I, I was working in a call centre doing sales seven days a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So politics was like... I didn't even know what fucking... I mean, I'm still not particularly political now, believe it or not, while mm. I put you know, my opinions out there. Uh, which so I think is it's, it's a good thing that I think it worked perfectly because... All I knew of you was what I saw face to face. Yeah. I didn't have any fucking lies put in, into my head, any any preconceptions. It's like fucking hell. This is a nice geezer. Uh, so yeah, so my old man's doing talks for the EDL. I then move businesses. I get my first my first office space premises. Mm -hmm. So I go because when I built my business, my office was my front room. Yeah. I had to convert my front room, started in the bedroom, then it become the living room, I'd have a desk here, my mum would work over there, we'd be sitting, like I didn't have a lounge, like that was for the first three years of building my business, it was in the front room. Then when I get offices, fucking hell, I think I'm Richard Branson. I mean, I didn't make a big deal out of it, but I was very proud of myself, it's like shit. I come from a council estate, I was fucking, one way or another hooked on drugs when I was 14, 15, fed them by my old man, exposed to pornography and fucking psychological abuse. I've been stabbed fucking at God knows how many times, in and out of more fights than people have had at dinners, I should really be dead or in jail. And here I am now, I've got my own fucking business, my own office, I'm fucking, I'm getting a real buzz. It's really contagious, the amount of people that I'm helping. The more people I help, the more people I wanna help. Lovely seeing a fucking smile on someone's face because I'm responsible. To me, that's like fucking, that's a currency to me. It's like shit, I'm getting paid twice. My old man. Hello like, geez, I see you've got new offices. Now most dads would say, well done son. Good on you. You've worked hard for that. And fuck me, let me tell you, I worked, I didn't just work hard for it, I worked fucking, I'm doing the back office, the middle office, I'm working the door, fucking every single night. I'm doing the, you're obsessed. the whole lot. No, no, I say you're upset. You're, I see it myself. You, you're, when you're on something, because even just getting fast, fast forward just to, I was trying to tie up with you for a year when you were starting a new, a new business a few years ago. Mm. You said, I ain't got a second. We, yeah, didn't see, yeah. we, didn't, we couldn't meet for a year because for that year you were, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm getting this up and running. I've got to get up and running. All my times I'm getting up and running. You didn't have a minute. I forgot about that. Yeah, that was, that was us. That was you two setting up your new business that, that. and you didn't have a second. No. I, and you, when I say you didn't have a second, you I, literally I committed. said, no, mate, I can't. I'm yeah. getting this. I'm building a success story here and I have to give every second till I get it to that stage. Yeah, I cut off then when any... You got, yeah. Then you got it to that stage and come and spend a few months with me in Spain. <laughs> Sorry, I can, now come and look, I can now come and look after you. I'll come and babysit you, bro. No, go on. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. So the offices. Yeah. So most normal human beings, we're done, really proud of you. Nah. Liam, you got no offices? Sweet. I'll come down and I'll have a whip round and I'll collect everyone's ink toner cartridges. It's an industrial estate. Now, by this stage, I'm... Stay away. Yeah, whoa, there. Yeah. By this stage, mm. I'm well aware that anybody my dad gets into contact with... I mean, there's so much stuff I've not told you. Yeah, cool. Any thing and anyone that my old man gets involved with, 
He falls it's, out. It's a car crash. Mm. And he doesn't just fall out with people. He, he doesn't just go, you go your way, I'll go my way. He wants to finish them off. He, he wants to finish, he wants to destroy them. He, perfect energy for my old man, he creates a storm and then moans when it rains. He creates the dispute, the disagreement. He is fully responsible for the severance of any relationship he enters into. Then it's a big fucking problem. Then he plays the victim as if he's the one on the receiving end of the abuse or the fallout. Then he makes up massive great big fucking lies about that person and he attacks them and their family and he turns everyone against them with the most outlandish lies. He wants to burn people down and destroy them. I know this. So I said to him politely, maybe not that politely actually, there is no fucking way I'm ever gonna vouch for you. Do not get involved in my professional life. Consider yourself lucky that I even spend a bit of time with you. That basically means I communicate with you over the phone and make excuses why I can't meet. I told you, I've not spent a great deal of time with him. And if you spent some time with him, you'd understand why. I mean, you think I'm fucking hyperactive. You ain't seen nothing yet. This geezer's next fucking level. But I'm hyperactive with fucking goodness. Mm. Even that's exhausting for someone to be on the receiving end of that. It's exhausting for me being me sometimes. He is me, energy 10X, but negative toxicity. Imagine being on the receiving end of that. Uh, Scientologists call it drilling. Drill, 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 drill. Machine gun, machine gun, machine gun. Negative, 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 negative. You're this, you're that, you're boom, 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 boom. Then he tells everybody else. And if you say something on repeat, just like the, just like the mainstream media, people read it enough times, they believe it. Same as him. He, he is the mainstream media, that cunt. Lie after lie after lie, on repeat, on repeat, on repeat, until people fucking hate the person that he's decided he's gonna ruin. So I said to him, they so all- he, oh, he ain't gonna take well to this. No, I said, I'm oh, home. Cause he's a, he's a narcissist yeah, he's and he will, he will not fucking take rejection well. I said, there is no way I'm introducing you to anybody. I will never ever vouch for you. Consider yourself lucky that I even speak to you. That was it. That was fucking it. He went round, he went round bad mouthing me to the, uh, to, his, to the family, to my cousins. Liam's a fucking dog, he's a slag. It, it, you know he don't like you, he slags you off behind your back. So he's trying to, he's trying to fracture relationships with, with my cousins. Luckily, they know, anyone that knows me knows that I'm solid as a, as, as, as a fucking rock and that I just wouldn't do that. If I've got something to say, it's like, it's to your face, as my old man found out. Mm. So they didn't believe him, but I was still well aware of what he was doing. I thought, okay, that's, that's pretty fucking harsh. All I've said is, I'm not gonna vouch for you. And you would think that he would have enough insight to, to know that, that he isn't suitable for human consumption and every relationship he's ever entered into has failed mm -hmm. and he's tried to destroy them. That was that. Anyway, he's now telling me he's coming for my business and he's gonna fucking destroy it and he's gonna sabotage it. In amongst all of this, by the way, I went and got some photographs from the loft. And I'm going through old photographs. You've seen them. I've seen this one. This, uh, yeah. You've seen this one, so it's this not. Is in, this is a, he's got, you're with him, you're a little boy. He's got his penis out and he gets, is that right, remember? Mm -hmm. And you've got your penis out. As a kid. Yeah, to refresh your memory, I'll show him well, on the phone, yeah. So you, you, you've, you, you, I know that you've seen them because I've fucking, I've either shown you them or I've said it's it to you. It's fucking weird. Yeah, I mean, you can put it up on the podcast and just blur bits yeah, out if you want, because cool. people need to realise that like, this, is, this, this isn't a fictitious story, this is so you've real, got a, you've real got, life. Did you remember this as a kid, or did you only, when you've seen it, you think, no, hold on a minute, what's this? And you know what, it wasn't even me that said, you do know that's abuse. It was my current girl, well, not my, my current girlfriend is, is, is Catherine. Okay. Uh, the, the girlfriend I had at the time, mm -hmm. uh, before Catherine, said, you do know that's abuse. With all due respect, Catherine's my lover. Before Catherine, I was living with a friend. Okay. Uh, very good person, but she was my friend. Big difference. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, as a friend, you do realise that's abuse. She I was bought, about six. I bought these pictures down. Right. This was on my dad's honeymoon. Okay. This is the time when he's fucking her. This is like, when, what do yeah. So, not, so, so, you, so connect the dots. Yeah. Not only on my dad's honeymoon, is he beating his wife up in front of me, scoring drugs with me, having sex with his wife in front, in front of me, siesta time. He's also now got me in a public swimming pool with our trunks pulled down to our ankles. Pictures can pop up now, true story. 
And we're both exposing... Floating up, I remember it. Yeah, yeah. we're both exposing our genitals. Now, that's right weird. you know, if you're of sound mind, that that's not me encouraging him to do that. That's him encouraging That's you. the older person influencing the younger person, his son. To flash them. And I'm doing exactly what my dad is encouraging me to do. I've got my bald, teeny, weeny, willy on display, and we're raising our hips above sea level, above the water, so our private parts are on display, me and him, and someone's taking pictures. And I can only assume it was message. his second wife, Geraldine, and she was groomed Bit by him as well. as well. Very fucking weird, but I appreciate how much of a dominant force he is. She was also a victim of his abuse. When you saw that, did you realise, or was it your then friend partner saying, this is abuse? I didn't, was it a light bulb moment? Was it a, did it start looking, when, did you think? Fuck. When she said to me, when, when, when uh, she said to me, you do realise, because I'm looking going, what the fuck's all this? And then there's pictures of us getting our bums out together and like, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a common theme there. Mm. And she said, you do realise that's abuse, didn't you? And I'm like, well, now you mention it, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't do that with a fucking child. I wouldn't do that. I mean, I don't really have any, any friends younger than me because I've got nothing in common with them. Even with your own children, you still put your pants, you, you don't walk oh, around like fucking naked, even uh, when they're kids. Totally. It's just random, weird. Uh, very, very weird. So I've looked at that and then I was- Let alone take pictures of it. Then that's I was, for his own benefit as well. That's what, yeah. He's wanted a picture of it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, why were they kept? Why, why would you say take a picture of this? Why would anyone take a picture of this? Yeah, I'm sure she didn't get her first son allowed and go, Go on, get your cocks out, boys. Yeah, yeah, he's... he's he would have told her, take a picture of this. Well, yeah. I now know this. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, just fucking outright disgusting. So that was when I realised that there was sexual abuse going there. Then I then told her the story about how he used to suck my tongue. This was a thing that I mentioned when I exposed him. That... And anyone that's done anything similar, like, you're in it from a fully grown fucking man, head to toe in tattoos, run a fucking security firm, I'm a rough and ready geezer. And if I can fucking say it out loud, if anyone out there is suffering from any kind of abuse, fucking say it. It's nothing to be ashamed of and it ain't your fault. It's important I get this out there. My old man used to put his tongue in my mouth. Now after enough times your dad does that, you then think, oh, it's tongue in mouth time. You think it's normal. He would do it on prison visits. Like he would, so blase. So as a kid, I would then put my tongue in my dad's mouth. Thinking it's normal. Thinking it's normal, I knew no different. One time he sucked my tongue. Now, unless you've ever had your tongue sucked hard, it's fucking painful. It is really, really painful. And he sucked my tongue so hard that it really, really hurt. So when I've mentioned that story, it's like, that's also abuse. That's very fucking strange behavior. Then you put that in with porn playing in front of me, having sex with your wife with the door open, I forgot about what he'd done. It was only later on down the line when a friend of mine, who was one of his friend's sons, who's my age, who was willing to testify as well, told me a story of what my dad done to him. I remembered he used to do it to me too. What did he do to me? We go Arsenal every other Saturday at Highbury for a stint. He'd rush me into the toilet if I need to go away. Rush me into the toilet. He'd get my fucking, my bits and pieces out. He'd hold me fucking dick while I'm going for a wee. So I've got my dad behind me, holding me fucking meat and two veg. It's like he's having the weave for me. Then he shakes my dick, puts it away, whizzes me out the toilet. Does it in such a fashion that it just seems like it's just normal. He's just my dad helping me go to the toilet. How old are you at this stage? Eight, nine, ten. Old enough to stand and hold your own penis. Oh yeah. That's what I mean. Oh You're yeah. Not three year old. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kids yeah, of that yeah, age, I'll... you go in the toilet on your own. Totally. Well he done it to your, he done it to your mate. Done it to my mate as well. When did you know he done it to your mate? When all this come out. Okay, so at the time. And then, then he's told me, it's like your dad used to, and I'm like, fuck, I forgot he used to do yeah, that to me. me too. So all of these little pieces fell into place. And what I realized about him, because another thing he'd done was he woke up with an erection in front of me, started playing about with it. Because when he used to come in and, in and out of Nick, he used to get put in halfway homes. So I'm, we used to sleep in the same bed. So I'm here, he's there, he's got a fucking hard on. He's got it in his hand, he's playing about with it. He can obviously tell that I am fucking very uncomfortable. Very, very uncomfortable. And then he's given it the sort of scratchy leg. Then he's got up, walked to the toilet. And this is another thing that I remembered. So when I'm exposing him, 
That's another thing. It's like, yeah. How do you get on to expose them? She tells you this. What, what, what goes from you thinking, that's weird, that's weird, that's okay. weird. Okay, so... To, I'm, so, do you go to the police? Do you make a video? Do you, what I, do you do to I, I, I realise what he's done is wrong. I just want to make it absolutely clear that what I'm about to tell you what he's been convicted for is the tip of the iceberg. There's other victims. Who are too scared. Far too scared. It's the same with every uh, predator. Some are very, very close to home. He's still got a, a little band of merry men that think he's fucking innocent. And when I eventually come to write in my book and I find out the legalities and the technicalities of what I can and can't do and who I can discuss, hopefully, in fact, the penny won't drop. They don't want to believe he's a fucking wrong one because they've obviously got similar tendencies. But anyway, my dad is trying to sabotage my business. By this stage, I've got all these things accumulated of what he's done to me. And it's never really bothered me. So I never really thought to use it as leverage against him. Then when I put everything together, the drugs, the sexual exposure, the fucking kicking things out of my fucking hand when I'm a, when, when I'm a kid, uh, the class A's, the calling me a liar, writing me a letter that I'm a grass, trying to turn my own mum against me. Never gonna happen. Fucking hell, me and my mum are unbreakable. All the things that he'd done, playing porn in front of me. If that was the eureka moment, it's like, wow, you're still trying to abuse me as an adult, you are a fucking narcissistic, abusing, no good bit of shit. And I always knew he was a sociopath, but I... What's a sociopath mean? Sociopath, no empathy, no okay, sympathy. Doesn't care. Every, doesn't, don't, yeah. feel, don't, don't feel any feelings of remorse, doesn't give a shit. Basically, okay. psychopath, you have psychotic thoughts. You can sit there and take somebody's life and not fucking, not lose a wink's sleep. And, you, you know, so, and I'm not too sure if he's, he could even be a psychopath, for all okay. I know. Uh, definitely a sociopath, definitely has a narcissistic personality disorder. In fact, he's probably got plenty of uh, personality disorders. I'm not a Did he have a normal upbringing? Was he abused? Do you know? His brothers and sisters were abused. He was beaten... Sexually abused? His brothers and sisters were heavily sexually abused. By who? Two different stepdads. Do you think he was then? No, he wasn't. He claims that he was when he was in a young offenders centre, but... There was no sexual abuse towards him in the house because well, he's a guy called Tom. Uh, fucking, it's no secret because that, you know. Did he ever get done for it? Whole, never got done for it. Uh, he's dead now, okay. but he never ever done anything to my dad because people know, which is why when my dad's wanking his cock about, when he's whizzing me into the toilet, when he's sucking my tongue, he's testing the water. He's seeing just how far he can push it. That's what they do. They don't go steaming in straight away because then they know if this kid doesn't like it, I'm going straight to jail. So this Tom who was abusing my dad's brothers and sisters, he didn't try his luck with my dad because he knew that my old man would shout from the rooftops. And they go for the vulnerable one. I watched an interview of a paedophile yeah. and they, they line them up. They see who ain't got a parent, they do this. Mm. And, oh. Yeah, so, and again, it goes back to what I was saying I think earlier that it's no excuse. If you've had a bad past, doesn't, matter, doesn't mean yeah. you, you've got fucking a green light to be a piece of shit for the rest of your life. You know left from right, you know right from wrong. He should have broke the fucking chain. He should have stopped the bloodline there and then, but he didn't. So yeah, his childhood was fucking appalling. Extremely abusive, extremely violent. He watched his sisters getting fucking beaten and raped. His brother, uh, he's not here anymore. God bless him, but he had a very, very, very terrible fucking life. And he's at peace now, and he was a very, very nice man. But... No, 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 none, none of this is an excuse, no. None of this is, and he's the only one that turned out to be a fucking absolute piece of shit, a megalomaniac fucking degenerate. So when I accumulated all these things that he'd done, and he's now trying to sabotage my life, my business, my reputation, telling lies about me, doing all he can to turn people against me so he can be the hero, I said, I am warning you, if you continue this crusade of devastation, and sabotage. This must be a fucked up thing anyway, your dad just... Mental, mate. Like, what the fuck, man? Mental behaviour, but I'm so desensitised to mm. it, he's just, he's just an opponent now. Okay. So if you keep doing that, I'm going to fucking expose you for who you are. Because also, he liked to masquerade as a fucking, as, a, as the people's champion. Well, at this time, he's, leader, he's speaking at demonstrations. Speaking at demonstrations, trying to tell people how they should live their lives. Speaking against sexual abuse. Sp speaking up against sexual abuse. I'm not going to say what I was going to say there because it's going to veer us right into another direction. But mm -hmm. everything my old man would condemn and speak out against, what he, done? he was that person. He hates women. 
hates women. He loves vulnerable teenage girls, possibly boys. See a picture of him. He's with a, a bully. Girl. Well, there's a photo of him with a young girl, visibly very young. Very young, and I had in a relationship with her. I had her. It was a strange one, but I had that young girl that you've seen him with. I had the nan call me up and say, Liam, we found her in his bed when he stayed at the house. The neighbour has seen her sitting on his knee, stroking his leg. She's sitting on his knee in the picture, no? Uh, I don't remember that. No, no. they're definitely side by side. Okay. I, I know, I know what picture you mean. But mm. some sinister stuff went off there, went went on there, and she's still under his spell. I'm going to be careful because her family, okay. I, uh, I've got a lot of time for and, and a lot of love for. But uh, so you're threatening to expose him. I'm threatening to expose him. I said, you continue. I said, your best just to fucking shut your mouth, walk away. I live my life, you live yours, or I'm going to expose you for what you've done to me. Because you are not a pillar of the community. You're a fucking scumbag. I've done the maths. I've connected the dots. You're still trying to abuse me one way or another. It fucking ends now. It ends now, cunt. He continued. I said, I'm warning you. Fine. You continue doing what you're doing. He's now on the internet fucking making up lies about me, trying to tell my staff that I'm exploiting them. When they called me up, I explained, yes, we charge the venue. Oh, yeah. a, few more, a few more pounds each hour <laughs> yeah. than what you get. Yeah. That's how we make our money. We charge, the, oh, ven we, we charge the venue a few more pounds than we pay you. Per hour. Yeah. And we spend all week building, fucking keeping the business together. That's not here nor there. Uh, but yeah, he couldn't understand the way the real world works. And he, but it's just an easy thing for him to fucking try and turn somebody against course, the, another person. Really. Massive headaches. So eventually I said, right, enough, enough of this. And I also knew, you know, I'd put together, you'd, you'd ruin Janie's life. Because that Janie who he's living with, who was a year older than me, who he had sex with on the sofa in front of the neighbor, who he also got on heroin that then committed suicide. Janie also got hooked on heroin. So he got a young, she, she, she went to him for singing lessons because my old man could sing back in the day. She went to him as a teenage girl for singing lessons, ended up a raging heroin addict. He's a fucking animal to come, dog. So all these things, it's like, mate, I'm gonna expose you, carry on. He carried on, right. I put a post out on social media because he was doing it all via social media. It's like, well, on what, Facebook? Do, what do I do on Facebook? My dad first abused me when I was X. I was exposed to this, 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 and this, and this. How much does it take for someone to, because most men are proud men, most men wouldn't want the public to be aware of this. What does it, what does it take to, to say that publicly? It takes somebody that's at the end of their wits. Now you've got to remember. How was you at that moment in your life? I was disappointed and beside myself with devastation, grief and shock because I'm a proud man, I'm a tough guy on several levels, I protect people that I surround myself with, I'm known for running a security firm. I've no been, one would have known this. I, I've been in fucking hair raising scenarios and I'm proud, so for me, there was no mileage in it for me to come out with such a fucking story that makes me look so vulnerable and like a victim. I don't, I'm not a fucking victim. I'm not a victim, I'm not even a survivor. I've just dealt with a dog, and I need to make that clear. All this like, you're a victim, you're a survivor, I'm neither. I'm a man that done what he had to do to deal with a dog. But it was a big thing for me to come out and say that I was abused, because I don't even like that fucking phrase, because I, like I don't feel like a victim or like I've been on the receiving end of abuse. Or I don't like to say it out loud. That's probably the best. But when you put it in black and white. Most people haven't said it out loud. Most people, people be watching this who have been abused, who have never publicly come out and let the public know I was mm. abused. And I really hope this encourages people to speak out. Because I tell you what, it's empowering. Look how comfy I'm speaking about it now. I'm not a fucking sociopath. I feel remorse, empathy, guilt. I feel everything. I, if I see somebody sad in the calf, it makes me feel sad. I have all of those emotions. I'm not a cold-blooded fucking individual, but the truth sets you free. And if you're keeping something that heavy in your heart, you've got to open Pandora's box, let it out. You may have to go fucking down a bit of a windy, complicated road to make sense of it all, and it's going to hurt for a while and you're going to be sitting in pain, but How, how, how detailed to come out. did you go? How detailed did you go in your statement? I shouldn't have interrupted you. What did your statement say? 
Well, it's okay, Giza, because since I started my podcast, I got in the habit of interrupting people, and I've had to learn the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, uh, the detailed statement was, my dad first abused me at this age. I was subjected to pornography, mind-altering drugs, psychological abuse, uh, sexual abuse. I can't remember what else I said. But this isn't the damning thing. That was a post in writing. He then comes back, he's a fucking liar, the mug, as if I've done that, he loves me, he worships me, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, I have always loved him. But it doesn't accept, doesn't excuse what he's done. And that's a shit defense, and that's what a lot of people that abuse people do. They're, they're still abusing you while they're abusing you. Even while they're defending themselves from the abuse that you're accusing them of doing, they're still abusing you in the process because they're, they're, they're now calling you a liar. That's the, not, that is the worst fucking thing. Is when you eventually like... It's not being believed. It's the worst. Especially when you're talking about something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, he carried on. I'm going live at five. I've got something to say. So that's okay, I'm gonna paint a picture of this fucking animal now. Now bear in mind, we live in adjacent towns. Everyone that knows me knows him, everyone that knows him knows me. So, if anything I'm saying is untrue, I'm, I'm gonna get called out on it. I went live. You did. I went live and I went public. So anybody, at any time, and I've done so this- you went live on a video on Facebook. Yep. To tell everyone everything that your dad had done. To me. To you, yeah. What I knew about. So, Left it public, so if anybody wanted to challenge me or fucking- Call you out say, for lies or like, prove you wrong. You're, you're more than welcome, I've got nothing to hide here. Now when my dad would make a video, he'd keep it friends only and nobody, so he'd have an echo chamber. People would agree with him. And, oh, so and, you've gone public and what's, what's that? What's that? What's happened? I'll tell you what, what happened. I'm sat in my chair. When, when is this? Oh, blimey, he's been, in, he's, been, he's been in jail five years, maybe seven years ago. 2016. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, me and time, me and time no, 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 frame. It's about, but it's, just, about, just back. it's about 2016. Okay. So I've put this live video out. My dad first abused me at this age. He's done this, he's done this, he's done that. He's done the other. He's tried to sabotage everything I've ever done. For what reason, I do not know. I've done nothing to fucking harm anybody in my life that didn't fucking deserve it. And I've certainly not gone out of my way to cause anybody any grief. He, there's no reason for him to be doing what he's doing to me and the time has come where I now need to let everybody know what he's done to me because he's pretending to be a good person. That's the worst thing when these fucking, I mean you get it quite often, these, these, pillars, of, these pillars of community figures like behind closed doors, they're fucking narcissistic and they're fucking deviants. That's him. As I'm rattling off what he's done to me, by the way I forgive you for what you've done to me. No problem. I live to fight another day and I've got a grand life. Because you'll be watching this, you fucking mutt. I forgive him for what he's done to me, no problem. I've got broad enough shoulders. I'm rattling off what he's done to me. And then I say in this video, and there was a time you got caught in that 13 year old's bath. G's daughter, he had a girlfriend called G. And that's all I remembered at the time. It'd been so many years since I'd even heard that story. And you got caught in a 13 year old girl's bath. G's daughter. And then I went on to other things he'd done to me. Anyway. Off the back of that, G's daughter gets in contact. And before G's daughter gets in contact, it's made the fucking national press, isn't it? Reggie Cray's adopted son, fucking, uh, because he's then come out and said, I'll tell you what, let's go on Jeremy Carl. We'll do a lie detector test. Now, I'm thinking to myself, wow, is this not humiliating enough for me to do what I've just done? But any publicity for him is good publicity. And he's such a narcissist, in his mind, he'll beat any lie detector because he believes his own fucking bullshit. In fact, I'm sure he thinks he's, he hasn't done any of the things he's done because he's very, very unwell. Let's go on Jeremy Carl. Let's do a lie detector test. It's like, yeah, that's not going to happen. You think I'm going to go on national television on Jeremy fucking Carl and humiliate myself even more? I'm a professional fucking businessman with responsibilities and a very good fucking network. I will not be reducing myself to that kind of shit, so I didn't entertain it, but the fucking mainstream media jumped on it. Reggie Cray's adopted, all the buzzwords, all the clickbait. Yeah, yeah. Reg Cray, Jeremy Kyle, Pete Gillette. Because also, my old man was one of the first people to go on to a reality TV show called Survivor. It was on TVS. Oh, there was an allegation against him. An allegation there. Annabelle Croft, who's now on Strictly, come, uh, 
Strictly Come Dancing. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Strictly. Yeah, Strictly Come Dancing. Yeah. She's now on there. Or is she a judge on there? Mm, was she no, she was she was contestant. She, she was a contestant on this okay. reality show. Okay. And I'll give you the article, you can put this up there as well. Yeah. She accused him of molesting her. On the reality show. On the reality show. It's like there's another accusation. Everywhere you go, you seem to be molesting people, and everyone seems to be a shit cunt liar. So that's another person which I forgot about. So I then mentioned this. Annabelle Croft, she's another one that accused you of molesting her. She was a liar. Everywhere you go, there's always something you've done to someone that's fucking terrible. Leave me alone, you fucking animal. Press get hold of it. I get an inbox from this, uh, from this woman. She was, when she was 13, when she, well, when my dad got in her bath, G's daughter, when my dad was in a relationship with G, who was, she was older than my dad, his girlfriend, I was about five years younger than the, 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 the girl in question. You were about eight. She's I was eight, she was 13, exactly that. Mm. Uh, and I've called that out. She's contacted me. She's seen what's going on. You free to chat? Yeah, no problem at all. She said, uh, she said, I hope you remember me. It's like, yeah, you was like my big sister. Mm. Talk to her, Liam. My husband's seen in the newspaper what's going on. I've then looked at your social media and I've seen what's going on. She said, I can probably put your demons to rest and I've decided that I'm happy to go on Jeremy Cole if needs be. This isn't a conversation for the phone. I need to speak to you. I said, fine. Come round, come and say hello, speak to me. I thought, fucking hell. Anyway. What's happened? Long and short of it is, her name's Natasha. She's put it out there herself. Okay. Very, very brave. At this time, she's married with two children that are in their teenage years. And don't forget, when I said this- Again, a difficult thing. Go very, very, what she come out and said was- Don't forget, there's other victims that chose not to come forward and pursue it because they know what my dad's like. Anytime, my, my, my old man has scared victims He's a criminal, off. criminal gangster, violent. I'll, I'll have acid thrown in your face. Yeah. That's, what he, that's what he told one of his victims that was gonna uh, press charges and, and take it all the way. I'll have acid thrown in your face. All of a sudden, the police don't get called again. So Natasha she, calls you. She calls me up. She comes around the house to tell me. At your house? At my house. Where is she living at this time? She's living in Crawley. She's, got a, she's had a normal life? Uh, normal, yes. Troubled also. Okay. She's been through horrendous abuse and she's lived with what my dad done to her her whole life. And her husband was her boyfriend straight after my dad. Did he know? Oh yeah, she told him. Yeah, she told him. Tell him early on. He was the one. Yeah, as soon as they got into the relationship. So when he saw it on the news, he's the husband seen it on the news. Said to Natasha, "This is a good opportunity." She's contacted me. She's come around the house. Get into the nuts and bolts of it, and the way she worded it, man, How's hit me in the solar plexus. Your dad first raped me when I was thirteen. Your dad first raped me when I was thirteen. So I'm like. Whew. Fuck me. What do you think at that moment? Stomach dropped. Uh, I was sort of torn between tears and fury. It was a, I mean, unless you've ever been in a room and someone's told you that your dad first raped them when they were 13, it's very hard to understand how you would feel, but it was very, very confusing. And uh, also you've got to remember, I also like to analyze situations and people. I needed to know she was telling the truth. I needed to know that what she's saying is, 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 an, is an honest uh, version of events. So we spoke and we spoke and we spoke and we went around the houses and we covered it from all different actions. Was she emotional? Uh, sorry, angles and, oh, fucking hell. Yeah, she was beside she broke herself. Down. Broke down. Years of clinging on to this thing that happened to her. How old was your dad when she was 13? Late 30s. So he's got an older girlfriend. He's moved in to the house, he's then groomed the daughter. He's then- Did she thinks she loved him? She, that's exactly what it was. He was in a relationship with the daughter, a secret relationship, but she was a child. And here's the thing, you don't have to jump out of a bush wearing a mask to be a rapist. You sleep with somebody underage, you're a rapist. You're a rapist. They can't consent. They cannot consent. But because he groomed her and she thought there was feelings there and it was the right thing to do because he convinced her, he was then having sex with her. And it wasn't just a one-off, it was an ongoing thing. 
They then got one of her friends involved for a brief encounter. She was a she was a witness, very brave. I've never met what, her. What, as in he was abusing her friend as a child? There was there was one occasion where she was part of the so, uh, yeah the, 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 the sexual soiree that was going on. When you found out he's raped this other girl at 13, did your mind go into panic? Did you start reliving your childhood thinking about other children you had contact with? Did you start thinking, Everything. hold on a minute? Yeah, mate. Oh, I went into overdrive, geezer. This is why I went to court and testified against him. I'd done the investigation myself. I knew he was guilty of that. I then made... How many others are guilty of? I would say... Three. That you know of? That I know of. Two categorically... Predators don't just deal with... They... Yeah, two categorically. One could be an accusation. There was somebody else that said he'd done it, like all these things to them. And I, and, I, and I don't believe them. Somebody from my dad was living in Howsham at a time, and somebody from Howsham come forward and said, "Yeah, your dad done this, 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 and this," and it didn't, it didn't add up. So it's not like I believe everything so, everyone says. So Natasha's come to you. She tells you he's raped her. Well, what's your next move then? Do you ask her? Do you then? Is it then you think this needs to go to the police because it's gone from making a video, letting everyone know, mm -hmm. to now having a victim? It's sort of organically. We just it, within the conversation, it was. We're going to the police. Okay. It's that fucking simple. Yeah. I made my statement first. She made her statement afterwards. And then other people come to me and said, your dad's done this to me. I mean, there's, there's one story that I, I would so love for it to be fucking aired. There'd be no coming back from this for him. There'd be Boy, no... Boy, girl. There'd be... Girl. All I'm, girls? All the others were girls? All the others were girls, yeah. Apart from one, one, one lad that he would take into the toilet and hold their bits and pieces. They're weird. Yeah, other, other than that, he, he wasn't even uh, used as a witness. Like, we don't, we don't, need, we, we don't need you, there, there, there's enough. But there's a couple of other things that he's done. Which is now going to explain, because in the early things, it's like, how does someone get 18 years? What he's done with you is psychological, sexual, mm. but he's actually raped kids. Oh yeah, On, ongoing. So there's other people that were going to come forward, then they retracted. Fine, there's, there's something out there that all his little band of merry men, if this was to come out, fucking, they would be, they'd have the shock of their lives because it's, well, it's all indisputable. Can you tell us? He was found, I can't. It's not, it's not my story to tell and it's my job to protect the person as well. Okay, so someone's come to you and give you information but they haven't wanted to pursue Well, it the or... story, well, the, the thing is... They can pursue it when he gets out of jail. What, that's if they want to. They, they've got a life, it's been turned upside okay. down and also, They've got their retribution through other people testifying against him. Oh. So they can live in peace knowing that he's got 18 years and he's sitting in Albany smelling his cellmate's farts every day. How long has he been in? He's been in five years. So he's out in four. He'll be out in four. Uh, he's, he's, well, he's writing a book. He thinks people are going to want to read his book. So when he was in Lewis, so shipped over, because he, he also got six months for a stun gun. When he got nicked, he had a stun gun on him. And why they've done that separately, I don't know. But he got banged up, got convicted, 18 years, unanimously guilty. What was his attitude in court? What was he like in court? <sighs> Let me tell you about him in court. Tell me about him in court. He sacked his own brief. Then the Why did he sack his brief? Uh, his exact words were, you can't get the staff these days. Because it wasn't going in his favour, he sacked his brief. Now the judge said to him, I strongly recommend you don't do that. He'd done it anyway then you've still got to have a solicitor there to guide you. Yeah. He taps him on the head, like a Benny Boy Pat back in the day, said to the judge, can't get the staff these days, as he's tapping his solicitor on the head. He's gyrating his hips in the dock. He's pretended to faint to buy himself some time in the dock. He had a couple of screws ferrying around him. He'd convinced them that he's the victim here. Very good at what he does. I had a screw from Lewis contact me months after he'd been convicted saying, I've left the prison service now. It was a conflict of interest, me contacting you. Your dad is very manipulative. I'm like... He won everyone round. It's like, yeah. Convincing. I, I know he is. Yeah. But he convinced some wallies on the internet, but he didn't convince the jury. It was, okay, so he was convinced... And while we're on the court, because this is a serious case, but there was a part of that case that wasn't so serious. Ah. Yeah, there's, a, there's a few little bits in there that are quite interesting. The video bit, because it's, fucking, it's, I died. Man. We'll do the video. I died. Do you know what, we could do the video because that would kind of, do the video then sort of, I don't know, some kind of motivational fucking message to, to finish it up on because we've, we've been here a while and mm. 
I don't want to bore your audience, nor you. This entire podcast has been about your dad. You live a very different life, and I think we'll sit down for part two. We'll do a part two. Because there's a hell of a lot more. Yeah, your yeah, success yeah. story, you will, will be an inspiration when people hear your story. You, you, are, you have totally changed, Tufty, in how long? Because you were massive, bruv. Yeah, I'd have been... You were a right of fat shit. I'd have been... Yeah. <laughs> I remember... I was going to love doing that. <laughs> we both were, yeah? Do you know what? I, was, I wasn't even going to say that. No, you were. Know I, I was a mess. I'm not going to go there. We were both mess. I remember we were sending each other pictures, mm. weren't we? Oh fucking hell! Look at the state of me, bro. Yeah, we weren't we weren't looking great. But yeah. that's a, that's that, that's another story. But you've got, yeah, that's that's. Do you know we could do a whole podcast on that? About, I think we should. I think we should about addictions, including food, and sometimes you don't realise you're in a bad place when you are, and it's. No, you think you're right. Yeah, of I course. thought I was right when you first come to Spain. Fuck off! I'm sound, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I think. Um, you but you're gone court. So yeah, so in court, a few things that took place in court. Uh, all the guilt is that he got, for example. Now, when the judges, so it, it was, I think maybe maybe it was thirty nine years he got, but when it was consolidated with like concurrent sentences, okay. how many it, charges were there then? Uh, six, don't quote me on this. Approximately sixteen, thirteen guilt is how many victims? Three, not guilt is three. Okay, but there was more, but they didn't come. There was you, Natasha, and someone else, another girl. Can't even remember her name. Never met her. Okay, but. Because also, like, you know, he would, when he's raping her, he's, don't forget, he's Reggie Cray's henchman at the time in the yeah. public eye. You say a word. I'll do you, mum. Your mum will end up in the fucking Thames. Yeah. And, you know, he was well known for extreme violence as well. Screwdriver in fucking people, punching holes in, but like, he was a violent fucking man. Well, he still is. He'll be in prison now thinking he's judge and jury. I've had Mal intercepted of him still telling lies to old friends of his that want nothing to do with him that have said Liam. I don't, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to return to sender like I haven't read it, but you better read this. He's telling people how everyone in Albany has been fitted up. Half of the people who have been fitted up, this fucking historical... That's so that he can become friends with them. And also that's become, it, become, become the leader of the fucking... Nonsense. Of, of the nonces. Like, yeah, King he's a Nonce. Top, he's a top nonce. Yeah, yeah, top N. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so caught. There was one thing that's interesting, which will give you an insight into the mind of a lunatic... All of these charges, so he got the rapes, he got the ABHs because he, he beat the girl up as well. Uh, terrible, terrible, terrible charges, unanimously guilty. So with me, it was child cruelty. It was, I can't remember what, I can't remember what the other charges were, but one of them was the, was the tongue sucking incident. He got a not guilty for that and the brief explained to me why they just couldn't give a guilty for that for whatever reason. It's like, I don't care. He's got guilty for all the other stuff. He's guilty for rape. He's guilty for rape. That's, that's, that's fine. Right. Cruelty to me, doing all these other things to me is fine. I, I don't give a monkeys. What, what would he have got for sucking my tongue? A fucking slap on the wrist. I don't care. This is, this is not really about me anymore. Which is why I can forgive him for what he's done to me, but I'll never forgive him for what he's done to other people. But when the judge and the jury are reading out this charge, guilty, 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 guilty. And I'll tell you what, mate, sitting in court made me think... I ain't ever gonna park on a double yellow line again. Because when they fucking come for you, this charge, four years, this charge, six years, this, and we're thinking, fucking, these are all concurrent. Boom, 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 it's like, eight years consecutive. It's like, whoa, this is getting juicy. He's got all these fucking years, 30 something years, 39 years, with the concurrent ones, 18 years. Got not guilty for the tongue. He's standing in the dock. As my cousin as my witness. He's gone, see? He said, Facebook will now know Liam was lying about me sucking Facebook his tongue. Facebook will now know. Yeah, mate. He's living in this little reality world. Geezer. <laughs> I'm going through 18 years, but Facebook knows I didn't suck his tongue. Yes, mate. I raped the kids. That's what he said. So it's like, well, if the jury, <laughs> if the jury have got that right, surely they've got the rest of it right. And when he's getting these big sentences, he's in the doctor saying, give me life if you want. I'll appeal it anyway. He always appeals to everything he's ever done. He's, he's always appealing it. Uh, so Has he appealed it? Did he appeal it? It's meant to be going through an appeal now. Fucking five years in. No. But this is coming from all these banned yeah, and merry men. Yeah, uh, have got time period. All nonsense, yeah. Go fucking, on. he'll be in there. So there was this one thing. Now, remember I said earlier during the podcast that you either attack an abuser with almighty force, which then puts you in a position where you could lose your liberty. I don't advise you do that. I advise you, you turn to support... And if you've got it in you, ridicule 
the bastards. And if you don't, and also, it's easy for me to say, say this, but you've spoke out, you've then found more witnesses that he had abused that he didn't know about. Exactly, yes. Which means if he wasn't doing 18 years now, he could be with another female who's got a daughter and he could be abusing another girl right now as you speak. So by you speaking out, it's, it's taking him off the street, which is why it is important for people to speak out. Not think of what he's done to them, but... Yeah, you, you are 100% right. And I say this often, because I've done some real things that I'm proud of in my life. But I'm telling you now, my greatest achievement, and I mean this implicitly, is being part of the witness program that got him incarcerated for 18 years because I love helping people. I haven't just helped people by putting him behind bars. Saved them. I have saved lives. He is responsible for people committing suicide, for probably multiple deaths that he got them hooked on heroin, burgling people's houses, doing terrible things, wrecking marriages, wrecking relationships. There's people that will, that will never be able to reconcile their relationships again because he's done so much damage and it's all fabrication. It's all lies because he's a narc. Mm. But this particular incident in court, which is very light-hearted and very, very funny, during the, during the online battle with me and my dad, and remember at the start, Tom noticed me on the internet for putting together funny sketches. I was funny, but I still am funny bones. Uh, I like to have a laugh and a joke, and I would put comedy sketches together, I'd put the camera on myself, and I'd be talking as one person, and then I'd be talking as another person, and. It was a great laugh back in the day when you could sort of speak more freely on social media. Now you've got a self-censor and it's, uh, it's another topic. So anyway, during mine and my dad's back and forth, I decided I'm not going to deal with him in a physical manner. I'm going to ridicule him. So I put this video together of the day my dad got sentenced to, to six years in prison for robbing a post office that was shut with Spider. He got a mention in the video. Big hands. And then when my dad goes to Parkhurst, I reenacted a sketch where my dad meets Reg. And as my dad's bragging about who he is and what he does, Reg has told him to shut his mouth and essentially bend over. Because it's time. And then I reenact a scene. Can we insert this video now? Yeah, you can insert the video. Because it's fucking hilarious. It's funny. But let me just give, give people the picture of this. There's a court trial, a big court trial, for a paedophile. Yeah? Oh, man. With lots of witnesses, 12 members of the jury and a judge. The video you're about to watch now plays. I'm also a bit of a celebrity. Famous, even. Oh, is that right? Well, you're going to fit in here just nicely, Peter. Now get on your fucking knees! All right, Reg, all right, you ain't got to fucking be so aggressive about it, I'll do it, just, all right, slow down. You got any lube? Lube's for decent people, Peter. I'm going in raw. All right, Reg, just, just put it in me gently. It's my first time. I've never done this before! I'm going to play the video. Te so, everyone yeah. just watch that now. What is the judge doing? What well, are the jury doing? Okay, so, well, this is playing. Before that video was aired, the, the, the leading detective, he's pulled me out of court. And he said, Liam, they're now, because that was used, what you've just seen there was used as evidence against me because my dad wanted the jury to believe that I'm not of sound mind. Now, if you watch that video, it's outrageous, but it's coming from somewhere of complete sound mind. I mean, I put that sketch together. That took time, effort, and fucking enthusiasm. So, but and also a way of dealing with things, I guess. Use, yeah, using yeah, humour totally, yeah, yeah. As, a, as a method of... I, I use humour as a coping mechanism. And this isn't me putting on a big front trying to be like... Do you still do that? Mr Big Brave. Do you still do that? I cope. Because you joke about You've joked a few times. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, mm. I'm in a real good place, man. Okay. Yeah. I'm in a real good place, which is why I thought I was in a good position to come over and help you in Spain. Mm. If I was in a shit place, I'd feel well, I'm not qualified to do this now. I'm not strong enough. So as we speak here and now, I'm in a real nice place. My friends, I couldn't fucking wish for better friends. I feel so strong that I can help other people, which I get it's like a bit of a passion, a bit of a passion project for me. Help I've got, other people helps people. Yeah, helps them yeah. It's can, and, I, and I hope it is contagious, and, and I hope that fucking spreads further than the plague. Everyone should be helping each other at the moment. I've got a beautiful family. Uh, I've got a beautiful girlfriend I love dearly. You know, I've got. 
best friends everywhere. I spend most of my time with my cousin, who, again, is one of the loves of my life, if not the love of my life. Like, life's grand, man. So I'm in a good place. So I'm not really doing anything to cope with anything because I don't feel like there's anything to cope with. So going back to what we were saying, it's played in the, you know, the police officers. The, the, the detective said to me, right, Liam, they're, they're going to use this video as evidence. He said, do me a favour. And up to this point, he's been... He's, he's, been, thinking, he's been deadly serious. He's, up to this point, he's been deadly serious. Like he's, sometimes I even felt like I was on trial. The way they deal with you, like when you're being interviewed for, 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 for like sexual abuse, if it's historical, you get treated like you're a child still. Yeah, they've got to pull you to pieces. I got took. Because you're going to get pulled to pieces. I got took into a fucking like a, a safe house in a room being recorded from all angles. Like fucking, this is heavy. Up until this point, it had been very, very, very serious. And then he said, "Do me a favour, Liam, when they play this video." And he, his face changed. <laughs> he smiled and he said, "Don't look at me." <laughs> so uh, I said, "Yeah, all right, sweet," because. <laughs> This is a video that me and Why my. Why you see this video? I mean, yeah, I mean, this is a video that me and my friends. Uh, we, we have played it over and over again in disbelief. I cried, bruv, when I first. I cried with your voice note telling me of the judge. Yeah. Go on. Oh. What's the judge doing? What's this, this, a, this, what did the jury do? So, this is a high profile. Pedophile case. Pedophile case. Of one of the crazed henchmen. One of the crazed fucking. Yeah, whatever you want to call him. One of, one of, one of the cray associates in a Crown Court. The trial was meant to be two, two weeks. It carried on for three weeks. The viewing gallery is rampacked. Not one Pete supporter there. So a multitude of people saw the whole trial, but it's a way so then my dad can go back and say, well, this is this happened, that happened. No, like it is version of events again. It's like, well, there was a viewing gallery there. Speak to them. So then this video is played in court. I'm here. I'm being scrutinized. The screen is there. The screen is big. The judge is there. The jury are right in front of me. They play this video, five minutes long. Two and a half to three minutes of that video is me enacting Reg Cray fucking my old man from behind. Fucking, Reg is, Reg is beating his chest as he's coming in my old man. I mean, I went to town. It was absolutely outrageous, but. What it, are the jury doing? Half what of, are their faces doing as they're watching? Well, it was comical. Now I'm thinking, and the judge. I, I'm thinking to myself, the judge doesn't like this at all. Because when, you, when you're up there, you sort of feel like you're on trial for something. Yeah, yeah. I know this looks outrageous, especially with my old man's twist on it. Yeah. I'm thinking, what on earth am I gonna say about that? I just gotta be honest. I'm looking at the jury. The judge has pulled his glasses down and he's in absolute sheer disbelief. <laughs> Bruv, the geezer couldn't believe his fucking eyes. This is someone that sees madness day in, day out. Something like this was quite different. Some of the jury were in, State of shock, couple were in complete disgust. I mean, I am fucking serving my old man, reenacting an outrageously fucking gratuitous scene. I was fully clothed in a tracksuit, but nonetheless, the message is loud and clear. My old man is getting fucked by Reg Cray, he's his bitch, and then he gets told to make him a cup of tea or something like that. But half the jury could not wipe the smile off their faces. I was like, it's a rip like you're at school and you can't laugh. And these jury members, they're sort of really, really trying their hardest not to laugh. And so I'm all over the shop. I'm like, how am I gonna explain that? The judge hates me. Some of them jury members look like they've seen a ghost. Some of them think it's fucking hilarious. And the detective has said, don't look at me. <laughs> so, and my old man's probably sitting there thinking, yeah, this will fucking get him. Cause yeah. he looks like a total lunatic. When it's stopped and it's my turn to speak. Cause then, then, then his defense was straight on me yeah. to explain myself. So I just explained, listen, when you're under attack by a bully, you either bully them in a physical capacity, and then I end up in the, in the dock where he is. I'm then being charged with something. Or you humiliate and you ridicule them. I chose the safe bet. I chose the way out that's gonna save and preserve my liberty. I made a joke out of him, because do you know why? He is a fucking joke. The bloke is a disgrace and he's a joke and he deserves all the ridicule he get, all the ridicule he gets, and that was the best way of dealing with him. What can you say to that? Yeah. It's like, yeah, that was me, and I'm quite proud of that fucking sketch. It's one of the funniest things I've ever done. Oh, mate. It was well thought of, and it put him in his little fucking box. He wants to parade as a gangster. I'm reenacting. Actually, you're a mug. You were probably fucking Reggie's pincushion, and and you are a mug. And then 
Yeah, after that. He gets 18 years. He gets 18 of the finest. Do you look at him as he gets 18 years? Or are you looking straight at him? Straight at him, Giza. So this How's is, I'll I, I tell you how, the, how it is. So the two in them throwing and him accusing, he accused everybody of lying. His defence, I mean, there were so many. His defence was, Natasha's made up randomly. The other girl's made up randomly. No, no, no. Come His defence was, was more, uh, what's the fuck, what's that program? The, the American CSI, what, what is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was like that. I paid the victims. I'd paid the detective. I paid the CPS. I nobbled the jury. And I had something to do with the judge. It's like, fucking hell, do you think I am? Like Al Capone. <laughs> so this was his story, one of many. He, mm. he, he also, uh, one of his other little fucking sideline stories was that the Islamic community had paid me because he'd spoke out. Because he'd spoke out against Islam. So the Islamic community have paid me to accuse him of what he accuses them of, to shut him up. So it's like, well, which one is it, mate? Like, did I pay, did I pay all these people? <coughs> uh, 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 of, of, has the Muslim community paid me? Like, what's the score? So anyway, doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out this geezer's barking mad. <coughs> and uh, Did you expect him to get such a big sentence? That's a big sentence. That's a fucking big sentence. Massive, mate. That's a big sentence well, for, for this sort of crime. I watch all the grooming cases where they've raped, uh, raped undergirls. Mm. Get... No, I wasn't. Well, I think we was, we was predicting. Mate, I'll tell you something. During the trial, there was a time where I thought, we all thought, he could fucking get away with this. I've also seen him walk from a trial before. I was in the viewing gallery years previous when he was guilty of sin and he managed to convince everyone. That's another story completely. So I know that he's got it in him to convince people because he's very persuasive. And the, the things that the judge was allowing him to say throughout the trial, and what nobody, nobody realises is, is, once I'd said my bit, I saw every single second of that trial. I watched every single moment of that trial. I viewed it in ways that I shouldn't have but I did. So I know exactly what took place in that court. So does the fucking 30 members of the viewing gallery. So does the fucking judge. So does the jury. Everybody saw. Well, that's and unanimous decision. There, there, was no, there, was, there was no doubt. Oh, no. Well, when they made that decision, they come back so quick. Yeah. We had to sort of hold fire. But there was a time where the judge was letting him say so much stuff. Because what, and he's done this his whole life. He'll go out of court and he'll just throw mud at everyone. And his brief said to him, it doesn't work like that anymore, Pete. You need to, you're here to defend yourself and prove your innocence, not try and tarnish everyone's reputation with lies. He was told that. So the judge gave him free reign to say what he wanted, when he wanted, and how he wanted to say it. He was handing him the rope to hang himself. Mm. And I now realise that at the time I'm thinking, how on earth, like what has any of this got to do with any of this? Let, like, how come no one's saying, order, you can't say that? When, when Natasha described his eyes as evil, now you can imagine as a 13 year old getting raped by a man looking at you, you're not gonna remember that as Loving. a nice day out on the beach eating fucking cheese and ham sandwiches. You're gonna remember that as an evil act. She said, I remember his scent was disgusting and his evil eyes. He got out of his little box, went up to the jury this close. He said, do my eyes look evil? Do they look evil to you? Do, do my eyes, eyes look evil? Off, to off his head. fucking head, mate. So that sentence was big. We thought he was going to get a hefty one, maybe eight, nine. When they kept slapping these, uh, these sentences, these years, these concurrent, these consecutives, but when you hear the whole trial, because before it went to trial, this was the prediction, but once you hear everything he's done, the bullying, the intimidation, the, con the continuation of it, the threats, the violence, the repetitive rape, and how he managed to orchestrate. I mean, he, he, he was he a manipulative oh, he's predator. Da he's dangerous. He, predator. He and they must have seen that. The judge must have seen some detailed. Every, that he knows yeah. he's a risk. Everybody, he's everybody saw exactly what he's all about. Mm. And the judge said to him, because you have put your victims through further trauma, there will be no discount. And then he hit him with, uh, with, with the big one. And yeah, that was that. And there, I mean, there was fuck, the people that had been in the viewing gallery for three weeks. What was it like? Round of applause, cheering. Was it? Oh, mate. Yeah, it was a, yeah. It was a big deal. Yeah. What was that moment for you like? Because you must have been happy in one sense. But that's your dad. Well, I'll tell you. 
I'll tell you, mate. And I know I've, I've listened to you talk at other times. I'll, te- I'll tell you what it makes you do. Mm. I'll tell you what it makes you do. It's a head fuck. So... You hate him, but you love him? Hate him, but you love him? Oh, yeah, fucking hell. Like, I'm, I'm not, it, when he dies, it's going to be great news. And I will... I've not drunk for six months. I'll raise a glass and I'll toast his death because the world's a better place without him. I'll also fucking leak tears into that glass that I drink because it's going to upset me because... I still love him. Oh, I wish I didn't. How do you explain that? How, how do people understand that? I think unless I think unless you've been through something as complex and as heavy duty and, and as nuanced as that, you're never going to really comprehend it. But if you have people that uh, people that have been through something similar to me, and I know that like what's happened to me is mild in comparison. I live to fight another day. There's I, I must stress this. This ain't no fucking sympathy poor me. Uh, you've never done that. This is just my story. Mm. People out there have gone through so much more and they are every single day and they're suffering in silence. You mustn't, you've got to speak up. But this was the, is it a quandary? This is the dilemma after, this is, this is the mind fuck. This is the, the, this is the psychological conundrum that I was in. It was a shock to the system. It was like being hit with, with a fucking steam train at quite some pace. Got the verdict, everyone's in the pub, Everyone's celebrating. The viewing gallery are cheering out loud in court. It was like a fucking football match because people had seen. It was clear as day he was guilty. In the pub, everyone's getting the drinks in. I've said to people that have supported me, my nearest and dearest, I said, look, let's just get out of Lewis because it started in Brighton, then it finished in Lewis because it extended because he was just going on and on and on, digging himself a bigger hole. I said, let's go and celebrate. So I booked everybody. The only thing I am, I, I, I did pay for uh, was everyone's room for the night and everyone's drinks for the night. We went to a hotel in Tunbridge Wells and we all sat there and we breathed a sigh of relief. Now, I hit the booze pretty fucking hard for the next few days. I stayed there. Everyone went, I stayed there on my own for several days afterwards. And I walked around that fucking hotel and I replayed everything back in my mind. I even doubted myself. Was it that bad, Liam? Did he really do? Or questioning yourself because he got 18 years. It just, it just, I was momentarily discombobulated and riddled with so many mixed emotions, very deep, heavy duty conundrums. And you've got to make sense of that. It's coming at you from all fucking angles and it's heavy. And every little bit of emotion, joy, glee, sadness, trauma, devastation, relief, but then there was doubt. And I'm thinking, fuck me, am I, am I actually doubting myself? To the point like, did he suck my tongue or, 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 or did I put my tongue in his mouth? Did, was, it, was, it, was, it, was it my fault? Mate, you think this thing, and, and if you're a normal fucking human being and you do have every human emotion that we're, we're born and blessed with, including empathy and sympathy and self-reflection, I now know this because I've gone down a rabbit hole. I've, uh, I've looked inward. It's perfectly normal and natural to feel that way but I had to sit in that to, to make sense of it. And then I come to the conclusion that what he'd done was extremely bad. Everything I'd done was accurate and correct and fair. I didn't put any meat on the bone. I was very honest, I was very raw, I was organic. And the only person responsible for his incarceration is him. And I'm very proud I was a part of it. Good riddance, you fucking animal. Mental, mate. Yeah, it's pretty mental. To go through. Yeah. Let me... I don't want to do a disservice. You have got... I know last time when we spoke, I said we should have done... Because this is negative, the story's negative, Mm. but you've got a whole positive, massive story. So I don't want to try and fit that in. Yeah, fuck that. We do another... We we will sit down again and discuss everything. Because look, you're looking fabulous, bro. You are very kind. You look great. You're in the best physical... Shape you've been in? I'm not a million miles off, yeah. yeah. I'm not a million miles off. This would probably be better for another podcast. I think it would help a lot of people. I think we yeah. go into it deep on another one. Yeah, I think we, I think we should do, yeah. Because, because it does help, yeah. Yeah, and on like a, like a sort of a, a parting remark or message to anybody watching this, because it's, you know, if we're going to do a part two, this is probably a good time to, to wrap it up. But I just want to, A, reassure people that, you know, a problem of is almost a problem solved. So the first thing you've got to do is, is speak out. 
you've got to believe in yourself, find some conviction, and a little bit of strength, a little bit of strength, a little bit of strength will come to you the more you speak to people and make sense of it within your mind, but you cannot feel responsible for somebody else's ill doings because a lot of victims feel they're to blame. It's their dirty little secret. It ain't a fucking dirty secret and you ain't to blame. You've been on the receiving end of fucking narcissistic, sexual, physical, psychological abuse and you speak up, you confront that motherfucker, you take their power away. When you take a bully's power away, you watch them crumble. You watch them melt like the Wicked Witch of the fucking West when she gets a bucket of water thrown over her in The, uh, in the Wizard of Oz. They're no longer as strong as they like you to believe they are. A bully is a bully. And you deal with them and you look them in the eye and you say, enough. And then you can set yourself free, move on with your life, reprogram the way you think, the way you perceive, you can fucking help other people with your story. You can really, really become stronger than you've ever been before. You can really, really become... Some setbacks, they're almost... That's a gift, that setback. It's a fucking tough one, but trust me, if you can mend yourself and mould yourself and make sense of it, man, you're going to come back like a fucking hurricane and you're going to sweep through people's lives in a positive way and you're going to take them on this big fucking spiral of positivity with you. And that's my job now, man. I'm obligated to give back. And without going on and on and on, because it's a bit of a passion of mine now, is sort of like, you know, making sure everyone's cushy. We're doing a whole other thing on this, because there's so much we ain't covered as well. I mm. just want, want to cover on where people can find you. You're, you've now got your own podcast. We come up with a name. You come up with a name. But <laughs> Walking down the street in our beer, in, in with our beer, our tail, aren't we? We could have been between the I've two. I've got it. A dozen. Well, I said, we've got it. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> and I sort of said, I haven't done anything. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's ours. <laughs> so, and, and if you want, if you want to see... Tom, on the receiving end of a podcast, he was the first guest on mine. It's called The Dozen Podcast. It's on YouTube and all the other platforms. You can find me on Instagram, at Tufts one It's all positive. It's all about building each other up. It's all about shaking the fucking horrible, toxic masculinity nonsense that's out there. It's, you know, come together. Let's build a community of people of like-mindedness, well-being. But it's... It's no bullshit either. It's like, don't sit there and tell me you've got fucking problems when you ain't. That's all in your mind. If you've got real problems, we'll deal with them. But uh, going back to my podcast, if you want to watch Tom on the receiving end, which I strongly recommend you do because we don't talk about politics. Anybody it was refreshing, man. Lovely. I really it enjoyed it. It was refreshing. It. And I think I'm always ranting about how bad things are of Islam or, or going yeah. off on my political one, which is so it was refreshing to talk about lots of other stuff. Yeah, it was nice. It was, it was a, a real, real nice experience. But yeah, this is about, this is, this is silence, not the dozen, but it is the dozen podcast yeah. with Liam Tufts, that's me. And uh, yeah, we're going to do great things with that. And I'm um, hopefully by my story, you'll see why I'm doing it because you think we've sat here for four hours now. We've connected, we've bonded, we've aired it. We're going to go back. We could do it for 10 hours. Yeah, we could do it. But it just there's so much to talk about. Makes you feel lighter. Mm. And there's no mobile phones distracting us. We're just in the moment, in the now, in the present time. And uh, yeah, watch this space. I think for all of us, it's going to be a beautiful future. I'm back on Twitter. Everything's great. Tom's back on Twitter. <laughs> going to jail soon, but I'll come out of jail. I still have Twitter. <laughs> I'll do it with a smile. Who needs freedom when you've got Twitter? <laughs> That's it. Liam. It's been a pleasure, man. Thanks. As always, brother. Cheers, bro. Cheers for having me, man. Thank you. If you're watching this, you know I'm censored. You know that um, they make it as difficult as possible for me to have a voice. It's important. You are the media, so I need you to share this. I need you to like it. I need you to support our work, support anyone's work who's doing alternative journalism, citizen journalism, anyone who's giving a voice away from the mainstream. It's important. Thank you for supporting me to make me in a position to do this content. And um, I appreciate your support, thank you. Carry on watching for more interesting guests. I'll talk to anyone, I'll debate anyone, I'll hear anyone's story. If you want to help me along that way, it's not free, I need your support. If you can support my family, that gives me my peace of mind. It means I can continue to do the work I do. You can do so at www.supporttommy.com. I appreciate every bit of support, as do my children. Gives me the ability to fly them out here to see me so I can stay in constant contact with them. I'm the platform and I'm censored, so I need you. I need you to share this content. Make sure you stay tuned for upcoming weekly guests, interesting guests, exciting guests. I'm Tom Robson, and this has been my podcast, Silence.